Hello, everyone, and welcome to another wonderful race here in the Pokemon Let's Go Any% Percent NMS tournament. Um, this race, we have the current number six seed, Thomas Patrick WX, against the 21 seed, Razor's Edge, and the unseeded, Sheep. Uh, Sheep does have a PB of like a 332, um, but it's not submitted, so that's why it does say no time there. Um, once again, I'm one of your commentators today, Etiquette. And with me, I have two awesome commentators if they want to introduce themselves. Hey, everyone. This is Iron. Um, I, uh, as, you can as you can see, everybody's running Eevee today. I do not run Eevee. <laughs> I run Pika. <laughs> but uh, I will try to do my best to uh, provide some useful information as we go along here. Uh, looking forward to the race. And I'm Gavin, and uh, luckily I do run EV exclusively, so I will be <laughs> uh, warning to any issues uh, with Pika version. So, uh, yeah, excited for the race today. All right. Uh, so the, the races are currently in the one-minute countdown before the start of the race. Um, so we have a little bit of time to sort of speculate. Um, what do we think... Um, we're going to see today in terms of any any wild things we did see a shiny yesterday um every racer also caught a chancy so i'm curious what you all think some wacky things that might happen today hmm we first saw all the most of the crazy stuff yesterday <laughs> i would say uh no squirtles yet though so maybe we'll see one today maybe a new world record we got one last night so if I just do it did again. get a new world <laughs> record last night that was and, ridiculous uh, lots of pbs as well hopefully did uh everybody pb yesterday i can't remember uh yes all three were pbs which is probably the only time that's going to happen just with the nature of races um but who knows all right so the the races are off um like we mentioned everyone is running on eevee um the two games are very comparable in time uh, so it's really not much of an advantage to run one over the other. It's really more down to what the runner knows best, um, what the runner feels is best for like a no reset scenario. So you've, you're have you definitely going to have a bunch of different opinions, even across, um, you know, all levels of play. Um, you've got some of the top runners both running Pikachu and Eevee, and then it's going to be very intermixed throughout. It's just sort of the luck of the draw that this one happens to be all three on the same game. Yeah, so to my recollection, Eevee, there's less runnable natures uh, than uh, than Pika. So for Pika, you can really only run... Well, Pika, you can't run minus attack, uh, but Eevee, uh, there's a little bit more in terms of what's not runnable. We'll see if there are any of the runners have backup saves. That's something that's allowed for the tournament, where you can have... Um, once you pick your starter and check its nature, you can uh, load a backup. Uh, that will has to be neutral nature. Uh, and. Obviously, once you do that, it's not eligible for a PB, but uh, at least it's fine for a race and it doesn't put anyone at a serious disadvantage in terms of having minus attack, because that's pretty brutal for both Eevee and Pika. Um, for Eevee, is it minus special attack and minus speed that aren't runnable generally, or is it uh, just one of those? Uh, generally, yeah, that would be right. Um, there are some things you can do if you have one or the other. Um, a lot of the, the fights in Eevee, if you have minus attack or special attack, are just sort of like you're just like missing ranges and things like that. It's not a lot of like really dangerous stuff. Um, but minus speed does have the whole sand attack issue for rival battles. So Ooh, yeah. um, that is one that you would definitely like to avoid. Yeah, so EV has quite a bit better defenses than Pika. So I think yeah. missing ranges and whatnot is I guess, less catastrophic for EV. Um, and it's, the speed is obviously much higher on Pika, so you can find a speed is generally okay there. There's just one yeah, thing, thing that it speeds you. Yeah. All right, so coming up here on all of the racer screens is the first catch of the run. Um, so. As you can kind of tell by the display underneath Sheep's uh, game feed, we do have to catch 50 Pokemon over the course of the run, and these catches are done using motion control, so this is kind of like that little tutorial where you're catching your starter. Um, this starter cannot break out, so as long as you hit the Pokemon with the ball, then you are good. Um, and hopefully we don't see too many breakouts uh, over the rest of the run. 
Uh, they are pretty rare. Um, we have a lot of strategies that we use to make them more, um, the Pokemon more likely to be caught. Uh, but it is something that runners will have to deal with. Yep, yeah, and for uh, we don't know, we're not gonna, they're not gonna know or have an idea of uh, anything about their EV at this point. But for Pika, if you have 27 CP, uh, you know it's neutral nature. So um, mm -hmm. for Pika, as Pika runners, if you see 27 there, you're you're probably good to go. You just take that. Uh, but if you're 26, you ideally want to check uh, as soon as you uh, get get your starter. And the EV runners, we'll see if they all do that here. Yeah, there there is a strategy where you can wait until your first level up, uh, especially if you know that you're not going to be running your backup save. You can wait till your first level up um, yep. to see what your nature is. Uh, that is a very common thing for Pikachu runners, uh, just doing the normal PB attempts. In EV, it's a little bit more punishing because you level up a full battle later. Um, so it just adds like a couple minutes to your reset times uh, if you are going all the way there. And especially with Eevee just having a few less runnable natures, um, that can be rough. So here's T-Pat, going to be checking Gentle. Okay. Gentle is uh, plus special, special defense, defense, minus defense. defense, minus defense. Uh, that is a fine nature. Uh, doesn't look like Razor checked and then Sheep got quiet so quiet. quiet is minus speed plus special attack um all right look like looks he's like going to the backup uh, yeah yeah definitely respect the that plus special attack um, seems good but uh yeah the sand attack issue for minus speed definitely don't want that yeah it's it's one of those things that if you if you don't have the strategies to mitigate it um it can definitely be worth just sort of uh loading up the backup save um, minus speed is probably the one that is, I don't want to say like easier to mitigate. Um, but if you, if you basically go back to the strategies that we used back in like 2019, um, minus speed was not really an issue. Uh, and it, it just involves like doing a different shop. But again, if you're not, you know, prepared oh, with that other shop, uh, then this is the right play. Yeah, T-Pat running into an extra encounter. Definitely don't want to be catching anything. Ideally, you don't want to be catching anything on Route 1 because um, they're all pretty low level. Um, but I, I will say, in, in sort of like a meta way, that encounter is not very good for T-Pat. Uh, T-Pat had an, a run yesterday that was a very good pace despite having nine extra encounters. Uh, so hopefully that doesn't impact his mentality too much here getting that right away yeah the encounters are not they're not they're not super long in terms of time but they're just annoying and they just definitely mess up your morale if you're uh, if things aren't going great already or if they're going well and you get a bunch of them it's uh it's not great mentally so try to avoid those if i can route one is just really bad there's things everywhere oh it looks like sheep got one as well Uh, Rattata was on an interception course there. <laughs> and that'll happen. Um, so Razor going to the first rival battle, T-Pat uh, not too far behind. This rival battle in Eevee can barely be anywhere from like two to four turns standardly. Um, one of the bad things that can happen is you can get um, paralyzed, which will waste turns if you end up fully paralyzed. It looks like Razor did get the two-turn fight. Most likely has a plus attack Eevee. Um, either that or hit two one in 16 high rolls. So I'm going to guess it is plus attack. I don't um, think he checked his stats yet. Yeah, he did not check. Uh, T-Pack getting a nice three-turn fight. Um, that can be a four-turn fight, basically, uh, if the Pikachu decides to start growling after turn one. Uh, you end up just doing a little bit less, a little bit less each time. Um, but on average, I would say three is probably what you get. Pika's generally four unless you crit. Yeah. I'm not sure if you can actually three hit with with plus special attack, but it's a, it's a range, I'm sure. If it even is possible. <laughs> I like Sheep's uh, rival name is T-Pat. Very fitting. <laughs> Worth the time lost to get the rival name in.
Yeah, that was on a backup too, so it's not really tough. Oh yes, yeah. correct. <laughs> it's the you know, sheep's fight goes here. It's got growled at the end. It looks like. Well, maybe he got growled at one point earlier as well. Yeah, so the, the fight that Razor just finished, um, that is where Pikachu would level up uh, normally, and you'd yep. be able to check your stats. Um, unfortunately, Eevee gains literally one less experience than Pikachu does um, over these first couple fights and cannot get that level up. Um, so you have to go all the way into the forest to do the level up. It's not that much extra time before you can see your nature, um, but it is if you're doing a lot of resets, it can be rough, so... Now we are entering Viridian Forest. Viridian Forest is going to be the first main catching area of the run. Um, but you're probably going to see most runners wait until the end of the forest to catch almost everything. Um, there are a few spawns that you'll see people catching early. Uh, sometimes people will catch one of the bugs early, typically on Route 2 rather than in the forest. Um, and they will also elect to catch a Pikachu um, or a Bulbasaur early because both of those are very rare. Pikachu being 5% and Bulbasaur being that special spawn um, that's about a half a percent to, to appear. All right, so Razor's level up here. Let's see what the nature is. Uh, we're pretty sure it's plus attack, so it's good. Uh, oh, we have a naughty Eevee. That is awesome. Ooh. So that is plus attack minus special defense. Um, that is one of the best natures for Eevee. Um, Special defense yeah. is Eevee's highest stat, so having that be the minus stat is really not bad at all. Um, very cool. Yeah, so we have Gentle for T-Pat, we've got a neutral backup for Sheep and Naughty for Razor. Are the three natures. Um, this fight here on Razor screen is the 100% best reason to run Pikachu. Um, <laughs> this uh, this Pidgey is going to be a two shot for Eevee, pack. but fair. <laughs> um, and Sand Attack can happen. Um, luckily, it's not a dangerous fight, it's, but it is something that you can just sort of sit there mashing A and tackling and missing over and over again. Uh, luckily, Razor got through it in two hits. Let's see how T-Pat fares. Yeah, so for Pika, if you're minus special attack, it's a 15 and 16 range to kill the PG. So. Very likely still, but it's pretty sad when you miss it. Razor's catching something right away. Yeah, I think they ran into it by accident. Oh, there yeah, is a Pikachu on T-Pat screen. You might as well catch it. Yeah. Yeah. And you get the two controller bonus for the rest of the forest. Exactly, yeah. Uh, so T-Pat just used a lure there. A lure is an item um, that will force every encounter to be the maximum level for the area, True. plus one. Um, so here in Verdian Forest, Pokemon can naturally spawn between level three and six. So with the lure, everything will be level seven. Um, we're going to be using lures almost everywhere that we're catching Pokemon uh, to guarantee that maximum level. Uh, unlucky breakout there for T-Pat. That is like a 90% catch uh, with the Raz and the Excellent. So definitely unfortunate. Razor's oh my god. You see, uh, see a Beedrill roaming around. That is another unlucky breakout. Wow. He, he went for Raz again, right? Did go for Raz again, yeah. All right. That's a third time. Um... Luckily, there is a Pikachu on a screen, so one of the, the main things that you're trying to do, um, it's way more important in Eevee than it is in Pikachu um, here in Viridian Forest, is you really want Eevee has to be level 10 before you enter Pewter City. Um, Eevee learns Double Kick, and Double Kick is going to be the way that we beat the Rock-type Gym Leader Brock. Um, and if you just catch essentially the three mandatory catches, if you want to think of it that way, uh, the two bugs and Bellsprout, you do not have enough experience to hit level 10. You need a little bit of extra experience somewhere. Um, that could come in the form of a Pikachu, like is on T-Pat's screen, 
um, as well as Pokemon can be glowing, which gives them 50% or four times the experience, um, or extra experience, I should say. So uh, you, you need some sort of extra experience. There's also, you can catch Pokemon outside on Route 2 uh, as you're leaving. It's the same catches that you can get here in the forest. Um, and those would be level 9 instead of level 7, so you'd get some extra experience that way. Interesting. T-Pat electing to do another one controller catch. I think the idea is he's going to um, get the Kakuna. Yeah. And the Kakuna will be a nice little e EXP bump if he can get it uh, first ball. Interesting. Yeah, because he missed out on the first ball bonus on the first uh, the first catch, so... He's already a little bit behind there in my experience. Meanwhile, Razor's hitting level 10, um, electing to catch the Bellsprout outside. Uh, he's going to teach Double Kick. Uh, Double Kick is really only used on like two fights, um, but it is absolutely necessary for really both of them uh, because you're dealing with Rock and Steel type Pokemon that your normal type moves just aren't going to be doing any damage to. T-Pat hitting level 10. Uh, still has the fight in the forest to get through, so Razor is probably a little bit ahead right now. Um, but that can absolutely change. She's and learning she's catching as well, and she is also level 10. Did she get both glowing catches? Because he only has two wands in his party. I know he just caught a Pikachu. I wasn't sure if it was glowing or not. Oh! I, the Pikachu almost certainly That's was true. glowing yeah. because this Weedle is up to level 9 already. <laughs> um, And it would have evolved at 7, so... Or 8, I one guess. Of his, one of his bugs was glowing. I didn't see about the other one, though. Yeah, for Pika version, it's as, as, as I think it said, it's much less strict on experience. You're catching just, just you just need the two bugs and an Oddish. Um, the Oddish is actually used in Brock's gym. Uh, you don't use Pikachu at all there. It's just not quite as useful. <laughs> and you'd have to do something similar with Double Kick, and it'd be kind of slow. So uh, Oddish has a special uh, Grass type move, which is much better against Brock's Pokemon because they have much worse special defense. Whereas Bellsprout uses physical Vine Whip, uh, which is not quite as good. Uh, so Pika Runners generally pull ahead a little bit here, especially because they don't have the Pikachu bonus as well. So, um, But they're a little bit ahead on uh, and some of the fights later on here are a little bit quicker, and they can make up some of that time later on. All right, so T-Pat still does need a Bellsprout. Um, as you can see just there on Razor's screen, in order to enter Brock's Gym, you need a Grass-type Pokemon uh, or a Water-type, but there are no Water-types that you can catch. And um, Bellsprout is basically a guaranteed um, spawn. Uh, Bulbasaur can be found in Viridian Forest, but that's that 0.5% encounter. So you never really rely on that, but you can use it if it happens to spawn. Um, so T-Pad's doing what we have uh, recently dubbed the Route 2 Roulette, where um, you can go out on Route 2, you get four spawns. Um, once you see four Pokemon, nothing else can spawn until one of them disappears. So you basically reset the route by entering the guardhouse and then re-entering the route. Um, elected to catch that glowing Rattata. Um, glowing Rat is really good for experience as well as it allows you to catch Raticate later, uh, which is another really good source of experience. Um, but still is going to be looking for that Bell Sprout. So. Ugh. No sheep. Uh, there it is. Has Bell Sprout on screen. Looks like T-Pad as well, it's good. Yeah, as Razor's finishing up Brock, um, this fight is basically spam double kick. Um, you do use the Tail Whip against the Onyx to uh, make it a two shot instead of, I think, a four shot. Um, and double kick is also a pretty slow move. Um, if you have really, really high attack or very high experience to hit level 13, you can skip that 
um, that tail whip, uh, but that is a pretty rare scenario. Um, so Sonic razor getting through. Speed, speed either, if you're uh, so speed. it does if you have minus speed. Yeah. Okay. Um, minus speed at level ten, you are outsped. Minus speed at level eleven is a speed tie, and then at twelve, you would outspeed. Um. But yeah. So razor getting through. Um. Brock in under 18 minutes with six Pokemon uh, is a pretty good pace. Um, generally, there's obviously the copy pasta about it, uh, but generally we use about 30 seconds to equate for a Pokemon. So sometimes you'll beat Brock with four Pokemon. Sometimes you'll beat it with uh, like T-Pat right now has nine. Um, and so even though T-Pat is a little bit further behind plot wise, um, does have more catches than Razor. So it's not really as big of a deficit as it might seem. Um, and we use roughly that 30 seconds per Pokemon. Uh, 18 minutes with six Pokemon is a pretty standardly good pace for Eevee. Um, usually like 1830-ish with seven. Um, you just sort of add and subtract 30 seconds from that. So definitely a good pace for Razor. Um, going through the first shop of the run, buying uh, great balls, because Pokeballs are just not going to cut it. Some healing items, as well as the first couple X items for the run. Uh, heading over to Mount Moon. Razor running into a rat here. Um, be interesting to see if he elects to catch it. No. Uh, no. Okay. There, there's a couple of different mindsets around catches like that. Um, that's the kind of catch that I personally like to do because um, I was forced into the encounter anyways. Um, but I definitely understand sort of delaying it because you want the Rattata that can evolve in a single level. Um, that's why if you look at like everyone's planned catch tracker, uh, you'll see Pokemon like Pidgey, uh, probably planned Rattata. Um, and the reason that runners are electing to not catch them now is because they can get them at a higher level later, which is both better for experience as well as better for catch count because they can evolve it in one or two levels. Um, I think the other than the grass Pokemon that you catch in Viridian Forest, the highest number of levels that you'll level something up to evolve is like four. Um, so catching a level 7 Pidgey and then evolving it all the way to Pidgeotto at 18 uh, is not really something you want to do. Too bad uh, another one we do not catch here. Uh, cool. Some people do catch it, I guess, if they run into it, but it's... Uh, Only if you're really desperate to hit level best. 15, you might be opting for the Zubat. Oh, that was actually before the cutscene too, so <laughs> a little unfortunate. Yeah, so here we're teaching um, Headbutt, which is the TM from Brock. Uh, Headbutt is a phenomenal move. Um, it is a normal type move, which EV is a normal type, so it's going to gain the same type of attack bonus for it. Um, it's 70 base power, which for a first gym TM is pretty high. Um, and it also has a 30% chance to flinch, which uh, can come in come in handy later on. So um, it is a great move for us to be teaching. Uh, Pikachu also does learn it, uh, but obviously doesn't get as much utility out of it just because it's not Pikachu is not a normal type, so doesn't gain that 50% boost. Um, and then here in Mount Moon is going to be the second main catching section of the run. Um, the theme for Viridian Forest was I want to get to level 10. Uh, the theme for Mount Moon is I want to get to level 15. 15 is the gym requirement for entering Misty's gym. Uh, you have to have a Pokemon that is level 15 or higher to do so. Um, and so generally you want to be a bit above level 14 when you're done with your catches. And then the rest of the trainer battles in Mount Moon will get you all the way up to 15. Um, ideally you're just 15 or higher because it makes so many ranges better here in Mount Moon. 
Um, but usually you can you can deal with being like 14 and a quarter, 14 and a half, somewhere in that range. Is that getting seconds. your attackers? Yeah. If you're familiar with Pika, you might uh, notice uh, Mankey and Shank Sandshrew normally on this route, whereas Eevee just has the Ekans that uh, is the normal bonus catch. Yeah, and T-Pat's Eevee is already level 13, uh, which means ideally you catch uh, Geodude, Paris, and Clefairy um, here in Mount Moon. Uh, T-Pat can probably get away with catching, honestly, only one of them. Uh, you, have, you want to catch more uh, just because your experience will get better and your catch count will be better. Um, but catching like a single Geodude here would probably give him enough experience to have 15 for Misty, which is a great position to be in. You can just sort of zoom right through Mount Moon and not really care too much about what spawns. Um, and then also another small thing is he already does have the Butterfree, um, which means that he can deposit. If you watch on Sheep's screen right now, he's going to be doing a menu to deposit any Pokemon that does not need to evolve. So in Sheep Drill, uh, the Pikachu and the Magikarp. Um, Butterfree is a really nice one to get deposited early because if it gains too much experience and hits level 13, uh, you have to decline three move teaches, which is very slow. <laughs> and you're already happy to decline a lot of move teaches for your grass Pokemon anyway, so... Yeah. No, don't want to do more. Uh, this is also the first area where we might see Chansey, I believe. So yes. That's a nice little boon in experience. We'll see how many uh, we see here. And depending on the time that each runner reaches that uh, basement floor that Razor's in right now, they might be going for the double Moonstone, uh, depending if they set their clock to uh, maybe 11.33 or 11.34. Uh, they'll be trying to uh, arrive in that room when the date rolls over so that the uh, hidden item Moonstone uh, will respawn upon the second day, and hopefully they can snag that for to evolve a later catch. Yeah, I know T-Pat usually sets it for 11.34, uh, which the cutoff would be 25 minutes. Um, and seeing that we're a bit over 25 minutes now, uh, probably doesn't have a chance at that double moonstone. Um, but it's one of those things with all the bonuses he has, uh, like the Ekans and the Pikachu and everything. Um, not getting that double moonstone is not a big deal. And it's honestly, it's a random chance to even get it to begin with. Um, so you can just sort of chalk it up to, oh, I lost the coin flip. Uh, T-Pat getting a nice glowing Clefairy. Clefairy is the big experience bump that you can get here. Um, so having a glowing one show up is really nice. Uh, this is standardly going to be about 600 experience. Um, glowing Pokemon also do have a chance of being what we call supersized, um, which instead of it being a 1.5 times multiplier is a four times multiplier. Uh, we don't know the exact odds on that, uh, but if that were to happen, you end up with like an 1800 experience <laughs> Clefairy, and it's uh, a lot. But this is the standard one. Second throw, getting 389. That is perfectly fine. And like I said, uh, Eevee basically already has enough experience to hit 15. T-Pad's still going to be catching a Geodude if he sees it, a Paris if he sees it. Um, but really doesn't have to worry too much about the experience leaving Mount Moon. And I believe Razor getting a glowing uh, Clefairy at the same time, too. Very nice. Uh, I did see Razor was sort of like walking around, not wanting to encounter that Geodude. Um, just looking for that Clefairy. But good thing that he got one. Also, it doesn't look like Razor has Bellspurt in the party currently. I'm not sure if... Oh, don't want There was an Onyx. <laughs> <laughs> Onyx is a very... Wow, two back-to-back -back Onyx encounters. Okay. Um, Onyx is a pretty divisive encounter in the community. Um, some people swear by it. Some people absolutely hate it. Uh, it's a very hard Pokemon to throw at, um, meaning like hitting the circle can be tricky. Uh, it is way better catch here in Mount Moon uh, than it is later on in Rock Tunnel, uh, but it is a 1% encounter here, so you don't see it very often uh, unless your name is Razor's Edge, 
today, apparently. <laughs> oh, looks like he is going to go for this one, though. Oh, okay. Interesting. Yeah, I definitely gonna use a raspberry here to improve the catch rate. See if he does double greats. So looks like he's doing that. Yeah, double great balls is something we didn't know until recently. Um, shout out to Anubis for doing a lot of research for us. Um, the second, we, we always thought for the longest time that the Pokeball that the second trainer is using didn't matter uh, because as you change it, it doesn't change the color of the circle. Um, so if you look at the circle on any Pokemon, it's going to be either green, yellow, orange, or red. Um, and that can change depending on what your best Pokeball is that you're using. And the second um, trainer's Pokeball didn't do anything for you uh, in terms of that color changing. So uh, we didn't think it did anything, uh, but research showed that it actually does. Uh, and it has made so many catches so much better by allowing us to do double great balls. Um, it does change the money route a little bit. You do have to um, you have to make sure you have enough money for all those great balls. Uh, but it, as long as you do, it is an absolutely worth it to, to do. So it looks like T-Pat's getting a bit unlucky with a couple extra encounters here again in Mount Moon. Um, not something you like to see, uh, but hopefully you can power through it. Good dodges there. Um, and you'll see Razor and T-Pat basically tied, entering the same fight at the same time. Um, however, T-Pat does have 14 Pokemon rather than Razor's 13. Uh, so I think officially we can consider T-Pat in the lead for now. Uh, Sheep also sitting there with 13 Pokemon and just, uh, just one fight behind. Oh, Sheep catching the Zubat here that bumped into him. He's going to throw a Nana Berry here to make it stay in one place. Very safe. Uh, as uh, Etchy mentioned in the chat, it's very likely to catch with one controller Great Ball, and he's doing 2C, so... Uh, mm -hmm. Playing it safe here. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, Nana Berries are an interesting case. So the two main berries you're going to see people using in the run are Raspberries and Nanabs. Uh, raspberries increase the catch rate of the Pokemon, but doesn't change anything about the Pokemon's behavior. Where Nanabs don't change the catch rate, but will basically prevent them from moving and prevent them from attacking. Um, you get, I think it's 20 uh, Raspberries given to you uh, very early on in the run uh, by Professor Oak. But the Nana Berries, uh, there is no guaranteed way to get them unless you want to pick up an item ball um, which there's one directly on the path but obviously that takes time because uh, unlike a game like Scarlet and Violet picking up items just stops the game, plays the jingle and all that kind of stuff so uh, you will see some runners elect to grab those nanabs, uh, that's going to be later on when you're leaving Cerulean City and some of them are going to not and just bank on the random drops from these catches um, so, for example, the, the Paris right there just gave T-Pat a Pineapple Berry, which is not something you we're going to use in a speedrun. Uh, I believe that increases the, like, rewards you get from catching the Pokemon. Um, but that's, yeah, just not something you want to deal with in the speedrun. Uh, you rely on getting those Nanabs from those random drops, and then there's only a handful of Pokemon that you actually want to use them on. Um... And if you don't end up getting any, uh, which is pretty unlikely, then you just kind of deal with it for those catches. Um, looks like T-Pat and Razor have, have the same catch count. If I'm not mistaken. Get that extra catch. There's a catch from T-Pat. Oh, interesting that Razor did not uh, deposit some things in his party, so he's got uh, Clefairy as his partner for this uh, Jesse and James fight. Yeah, luckily with, with plus attack and decent experience, like RDB almost level 16, um, the 
partner Pokemon you have doesn't matter too, too much. Um, the, the way through this fight standardly is going to be to X attack and headbutt. Um, a plus two headbutt gets rid of the Ekans in one hit uh, always, I believe. Unless you have like really bad experience and or minus attack, I think. Um, but it doesn't always one shot the coughing. It's actually a pretty bad range uh, with standard experience, standard attack. Uh, and so you, you generally want a partner Pokemon that can deal a lot of damage. Um, so back in the day, we used to use uh, Butterfree because Butterfree's Gust was really powerful um, against the coughing. Nowadays, we typically do what T-Pat is doing here, um, where you'll probably elect to either Acid or Vine Whip uh, to handle that range. Um, but you can see, like, the coughing lives on, like, one or two HP, so it doesn't really matter what health or what move you're using. Um, anything is going to take out the, the last little bit of HP. Yeah, in certain cases for Pika, you're using uh, you're using Thundershock as your attacking move here, and uh, the the acid can sometimes finish off both of them. So if if you're if you, unless you have like really good special attack or lower level or higher level, sorry, the the coughing doesn't die. So typically, if it it'll, if it goes down to pretty low HP, then I would I would generally target Ekans uh, the second turn, and then Oddish would finish both off with Absorb or not Absorb Acid. So it's kind of, things are a little bit different there, obviously, with the two versions. Um, and yeah, speaking of another difference between the two versions, um, so on Razor's screen, uh, you can see him finishing up learning the three move tutor moves um, that Eevee gets. Uh, these are exclusive to the starter Eevee, so you can't just take a normal Eevee and bring it here and teach it the moves. Um, but we're going to be learning uh, four of these moves overall in the run, three of them here. And those are Buzzy Buzz, which is a high power electric move that always paralyzes. You have Bouncy Bubble, which is a high power uh, water move that is kind of like Absorb. It'll give you health back um, proportional to how much damage you dealt. And Sizzly Slide, which is a high power fire move that always burns. Um, and the difference is in Pikachu, uh, Pikachu learns one move. It gets one move here, uh, and that is Zippy Zap, which is a mediocre power. Um, high priority move that always critical hits. Uh, and so Eevee has all this extra move coverage where Pikachu just kind of has this one you know, pretty powerful move that serves it pretty well. Um, but there is a bit of a trade-off because teaching all three of these moves, you can see, does take quite a long time. So even though Eevee can pretty much one-shot everything except for like Misty Starmie through the section sometimes, um, you're almost always going to have faster splits here and Pikachu just because you don't spend the 30 extra seconds uh, teaching moves. Uh, yeah, with... It's interesting you say that because the uh, the category extension ditch Bill, which is you pretty much splits to Bill's house and then leave without helping it. The record is currently held on Eevee version. Uh, mm -hmm. And in that category, you do still get all three of those special moves. Interesting. I did not know that. I knew I knew most runners yeah, e e did that category on Pika, but very cool. All right, so Misty here. Yeah, um, oh, oh, go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna say, no, gonna uh, say uh, like, Misty. <laughs> <laughs> you you, you go at it. All right, I, I, was, I was just going to say, Misty here uh, can be slightly dangerous um, if you have the Eevee that Razor has, um, being minus special defense. Uh, you do have to take a hit from the Starmie. Uh, in Pikachu version, you would be using that high priority move, and even if you get outsped by the Starmie, it doesn't matter because you are using high priority. Um, but, but Eevee does have to both two-shot as well as um, you know take a hit because it's outsped. So... Uh, can be dangerous if you're not in at full health, but luckily Razor's both high experience um, and was at full health, so that fight was not too, too bad. Yeah, just sort of just left one final thought on the whole move coverage uh, difference between Eevee and Pika. So Pikachu will rely a lot more on partner Pokemon to work in the mid game, whereas Eevee can use them in edge cases. Uh, as far as I remember, but uh, you'll see Eevee being used a lot more as the main battler. Yeah, and the the other interesting thing is all four of the 
you know, broken EV moves that we're going to be using um, all have really good secondary effects, and we actually use those secondary effects um, for one reason or another in in some of the fights. So, for example, this Misty fight that T-Pat's on, um, by paralyzing the Starmie, uh, we can guarantee that we outspeed it turn two. Um, unfortunately, you know, T-Pat did get burned, uh, but that's why we buy burn heals. The healing effect from Bouncy Bubble is used quite a bit, actually, um, in some conditional strategies just to heal up uh, rather than having to go into your menu to heal. The burning for Sizzly Slide is used on specifically Giovanni as well as a couple of other fights uh, to basically reduce the amount of damage that you're going to be taking. Um, and then the fourth move that we don't have yet we'll have when we get to Celadon is Glitzy Glow, uh, which will set up a light screen, and that light screen can be useful to mitigate some of the damage on some of the fights that you're a bit underleveled for. And you'll see as Razor starts going through Nugget Bridge now that um, that move coverage, uh, type coverage, really comes in handy uh, with all these mons being able to one-shot pretty much everything and not having the same risk as the Pika version where uh, there's opportunities to get poisoned or you have to use the Oddish to take out the Sandshrew. Uh, it's much simpler and uh, easier to breeze through. So that level up there for sheep mid battle is pretty good. Um, I haven't been paying too much attention to the actual stat points that he's been getting, um, but this Starmie can do almost 30 damage. So um, being that low, getting the the very rare Psy Wave. Uh, you love to see Psy Wave because it can't burn. Um, but yeah, that was a, that was a little bit dicey. Um, but luckily he got through it, which is awesome. Uh, and then. Over here on Razor's screen, this is that power of the Bouncy Bubble. Uh, even though you are at, like, you know, a quarter health right now, um, you're going to be leaving Nugget Bridge almost every time at full health because uh, you can just heal up on this and then there's a Growlithe later on that you can also one-shot with Bouncy Bubble. Yeah, that Sanctuary is a bit problematic on Pika because Pika can't one-shot it, so you have to either headbutt it twice uh, which risks sand attack if you don't flinch, or if this and if this, uh, if it's to use sand attack. Um, so the strat you can do there is to controller and heal Pikachu, because Pikachu doesn't have a move like Bouncy Bubble, so you potion Pikachu on the Pikachu turn, and then you use Oddish, which is generally still in your party here, and you can just one-shot the Sanctuary. Yeah, leveling up, uh... Leveling up Oddish or Bellsprout is kind of a, a newer addition to the run. Um, you obviously you catch it at like level seven or level nine, and they don't evolve until level twenty-one, and so that's a lot of wasted level ups essentially, along with the the move learns. Um, but Pikachu really gains a benefit from having the Oddish in its party uh, for the majority of the early game. Uh, just having the ability to do the uh, that heal fight on that Sandshrew, um, as well as some other things, so it uh, ends up being pretty worth it in Pikachu. In Eevee, it is still something you, you, um, you'll see a lot of runners doing just for the consistency of having that extra catch, um, as well as when they make it to Route 6, which is going to be the next big catching section, having another, like, a partner Pokémon to do two controller throws with, uh, because you cannot do two controller throws if you only have one Pokémon in your party. Um, the downside is uh, you're going to notice, um, especially like on T-Pat's screen, every time T-Pat gains experience, uh, he's going to have an extra text box that says your party also gained experience. Um, and those text boxes are pretty fast, uh, but they do add up. And so it ends up being something like eight seconds, I think, over this section of the game. Um, just with all those extra text boxes. So uh, it is something I, I think you'll see most people in the tournament electing to evolve Bellsprout. Um, but it is something that, you know, you will see some runners like Razor, um, opting to not do that. 
uh, just try to get that little bit of extra time and is going to catch a different Pokemon somewhere else. Let's see what we see here for a Razor screen. This is the one place you can see uh, Squirtle in the run. I uh, did see it there. Yeah, and this, this route also has an extra Pokemon for Eevee to catch uh, because Meowth can spawn here. So uh, earlier on Route 3 and 4, it's Ekans for Eevee versus um, Sandshrew and Mankey. And then here, uh, Eevee can actually get a Meowth where Pikachu almost always just doesn't see anything useful. The other useful thing you can catch there is Venonat. Um, but depending on where it spawns on the route in terms of like, is it too far left? Uh, you'll see people opting to skip that too. T-Pet screen. Actually going to go for the Venonat, looks like. Yeah, this is another benefit of having the Bell Sprout um, alongside you, is you can two controller this catch. Venonat is something that back back before uh, I used to evolve Weeping Bell, um, I basically had sworn off them that it was like I'm never catching this thing. It sucks. It never gets in. Um, but now with two controllers, like a consistent two controller here, um, it is a lot more worth it. So, also getting past all the uh, trainers there. Yeah, this and is Razor. The, the final fight here. Uh, go ahead. Oh, just saying. And Razor, uh, remembering not to ditch Bill successfully. <laughs> yeah. Um, so something interesting about this game um, compared to other Kanto games is they actually uh, prevent you from leaving Cerulean City until you have both beaten Misty and uh, helped Bill. In the original games, uh, you could actually leave Cerulean just by helping Bill and not fighting Misty yet. Um, the, the main reason why you would want to beat Misty in those games is because in order to use the HM cut, uh, you have to have Misty's badge. And so, even though you could leave Cerulean, you could get, basically get to Vermilion, and then that would be it. Like, you can't go any further. Um, this game does require us to beat Misty, which is why we do it early. Um, but it doesn't have the same requirement for badges to use those special moves. Um, and so, this is actually the last gym we're going to be doing for over an hour. Um, the next gym we're going to be doing is actually going to be Blaine's gym, uh, which is normally seventh. Uh, that's going to be our third badge, uh, and that should be roughly around, for a lot of top runners, it's going to be around the two-hour mark, uh, a little bit past the two-hour mark. So um, it, it's it's really nice thing about this game in terms of allowing a lot of different routing decisions um, and uh, allowing you to be like very over-leveled for some of these gyms. Uh, if we were to do Surge right now, it would probably be like a six-turn fight for three Pokemon. Later on, it's just going to be a three-turn fight, uh, which, you know, is obviously a lot faster. Be interested to see what T-Pat decides to do here. Um, so the next major catching section uh, it's way more important of a catching section in pikachu than it is in eevee uh is route six route six you have the option of catching a pidgey a vulpix or growlithe depending on your version um, a jigglypuff and um, a pretty rare encounter in abra um abra is a very good bonus to get because it sort of comes as a pair of pokemon because you can evolve it in a single level um and t-pat has been toying with an idea of essentially if you have really good experience just don't even bother with route six catches just run straight through the route and head to ssan um and i believe he's in a high experience uh state right now so it'll be interesting to see if he decides to skip route six catches um i personally don't love the idea 
uh, I think a lot of that experience and that just general catch odds um, or like catch count is worth it. Um, but I know T-Pat has had some success skipping it, so. There's an Abra on Razor Abra. screen. Uh, very important that you approach it from behind like that. Uh, if you approach it from the front, it will teleport away. Um, and this is one of those negative side effects I was saying about um, not having a second Pokemon with you. Uh, Razor here has to do a one controller catch on this Abra. I don't know if he intentionally did the Raspberry instead of the Nana. All right, it got in. That's good. Yeah, normally you'd nanap there, but I, it, I think he went for Raz because he's one controller. That's going to be my guess. Yeah, pretty much anywhere you have the opportunity to two controller catch, you want to be two controller catching. Um, the one area that is a very important area for catches uh, that you'll see people doing one controller is in the water. So on Route 21, later on, there's going to be a couple, hopefully only one for everyone, but potentially a couple catches that you have to do in the water, and you cannot summon the second controller in the water. So, um, so yeah, T-Pat did look like he lured, so um, is going to go for these Route 6 catches, which I agree with. Full fix is a nice one. Um, Jigglypuff uh, is an annoying catch, as you can see. Um, generally, the strat here is to immediately throw. Um, because it, it, at the very worst, will start to jump up, um, but it won't be flying all over the place. And that thing used to really annoy me in terms of catching it when I ran this game a couple years ago, but uh, the new catch strats in terms of what to do uh, for each Pokemon, uh, this has really helped a lot. It's very consistent now. Uh, mm -hmm. In addition, for Pikachu, you would catch Growlithe here, and that's a really good Pokemon to have. It's almost a required catch, uh, used as a partner for a few fights. You can make do without it, but it's not great. <laughs> so, uh, Vulpix isn't quite the same. You just catch it as a as a mod to have uh, for your for your catch count, and that's pretty much it. Um, so something Razor just did uh, that you'll see T Pat doing in a in a second uh, is the first of a few trainer skips we have in the run. So. Um, this category is any percent NMS. NMS stands for no mount skips. Um, that is a different category of skips that we'll talk about later on in Victory Road when it's more relevant. Uh, but there are a few trainers that we can basically skip because their vision is just not exactly what you'd expect them to be. Um, and this one, on the way into Vermilion City, there are two trainers, uh, one on each side of the path, and their vision stops just before the midpoint of the path. So if you line yourself up in a, a good way, um, you can basically go right down the middle, um, get a field goal, and walk through just like T-Pat did. Um, it is a little... It's, like, strict, but also a little bit lenient. Um, if you go back and watch Razor's skip there, uh, it looked like you might have been able to get hit there, but uh, luckily didn't, so... Um, that's good. You do have to do that skip twice. Uh, you have to do it once on the way down and once on the way back up. The way back up is generally considered to be easier just because it's easier to line yourself up. Uh, there is a um, there's a pattern on the floor of Vermilion City. Uh, you can see this tile pattern on Razor's screen that you can sort of line yourself up with that middle tile uh, and then just hold straight up. So Yeah, there's, there's debate as to which of the trainer skips is the hardest in the game. Um, I believe that one is the hardest. Uh, other yeah. people say Alexa is, but... Uh... No, I'd agree. I'd agree. I've hit this. I've hit this thing dozens more times, or that that skip. I've missed that skip dozens more times than hitting Alexa. So. All right. So, um, second shop of the run for all of the racers here in Vermilion City. Uh, this is where we're gonna get basically the rest of the X items that we need 
um, as well as super potions and a lot more uh, great balls. Uh, the rest of the XMs that we need for the Eevee or Pikachu section of the game. Um, the shops, I think since generation like four, um, change what they sell uh, based on the number of badges you have. And so because we're not be gonna be getting any badges for the next hour, um, there's really no reason to delay the shop to like unlock things like hyper potions or anything like that. Um, so we just get a bunch of super potions that we need as well as X items um, as and lures. Uh, as well as potentially some repels, depending on what route you're doing. Um, repels will completely remove Pokemon from the map, which can be useful in two scenarios. Uh, the obvious one being, I want to avoid the counters, so let me use a repel. Um, but the second is if you have a situation where you are on a route and there are Pokemon that are there that are not something you want to be catching, you can use a repel and then use a lure again immediately to... Uh, essentially refresh the spawns on the area. Um, so uh, Route 10 is a very common place for people to be doing that. Uh, there are other places that you'll see people do it, uh, but Route 10 is probably the main main one that that'll happen on. I see Razor here having Abra as the partner, and I think I saw a sand attack come up there, so uh, I'm not sure what... Yeah, this... This is one of those fights that's rough if you have minus speed. Uh, Razor doesn't have minus speed, but um, if you are... Yeah, as I say, if you're 18, then you need three AVs in order to outspeed. Um, and if that just doesn't happen, then it's a bit unfortunate. You just kind of have to deal with it. Um, we didn't really talk about AVs, but basically AVs are um, a random value that gets added to your stat uh, every time you level up. And uh, the, the randomness is biased a little bit, depending on what your nature is, as well as your characteristic. Um, but it's one of those factors that even though, like, all the, all the starter Pokemon have the exact same uh, IVs, they're always going to have the best possible stats, uh, and their nature can change. Um, but every, like, naughty EV is not going to be the same, because you're going to end up with a different amount of AVs in every stat um, from run to run. So it makes for a really unique running experience. So for this rival fight, generally Eevee's doing all the lifting here. It's not your partner mod is not doing any of the uh, attacking. It's just it's just setting up. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Correct. I know for Pika, yeah, because for Pika you use Growlithe here and or Kadabra. Or or Kadabra I should say. Um, and they do a little bit of damage. It's just nice having that type coverage. Sheep getting a little unlucky with the trainer pass that uh, a lot of things are flying in their way. <laughs> oh, and the lore ran out right before. <laughs> yeah, that's unfortunate. I I would rather take that encounter than the uh, than the battle, so but, yeah. I consider that a win. <laughs> um, and then in terms of pace, um, you know, you can see T-Pat just barely behind Razor, like in the same room, uh, just like a loading zone behind. Um, however, T-Pat does have 18 Pokemon where Razor only has 17. Uh, so I think I would still consider T-Pat to be in the lead just by like a little bit, maybe like 10 to 15 seconds. Here we see the reverse skip for Razor. Turned a little early, but you know what? Take that. Skip for T-Pat. Well done. I think we talked about how like we're not going to get any badges for a while. The game, I think, I guess, intends for you to fight to Surge next, but it's just not practical. So we're going to wait until we have our... Uh a better mod to use for that to get through the fight much faster. Yeah, and there's actually an extra cutscene that plays if you beat it right then. Um, after you beat the gym, there's a little cutscene with Misty where um, they want to take you like to Diglett's Cave so you can go get the light up, uh, basically the Flash HM. 
um, and all that gets skipped if you if you just do it later. So. Oh, interesting. Hmm. I wonder what causes it to get skipped. I have no idea. I was literally just thinking about that. <laughs> All right, so the racer is making their way onto Route 9. Uh, Route 9 has some... This is where, like, if you have, like, bad experience or bad stats, um, you can start running into a couple ranges. Um, this Eevee here can can be one-shot with a next attack, um, but generally you're going to be setting up a guard spec to avoid uh, sand attack as well as growl, um, and then just sort of end up two-shotting the Eevee. Uh, in Pikachu, you do one-shot generally with double kick, um, but we had to unteach double kick for our other broken moves uh, on the Eevee version. And then after Route 9 is going to be Route 10, which has the first of a pretty long catch section. Uh, we're going to be catching a lot of Pokemon between Route 10 and Rock Tunnel. Um, and this is where uh, the, the catch route really starts to to form itself around what exactly is your plan going to be for the rest of the run. So um, if you look at the, the trackers, um, you can see like Sheep right now has 19 caught, 51 planned. Uh, you want to be around that 50 planned mark. You'll see a lot of runners go all the way up to like 57, depending on their bonuses they get. Um, but Route 10 and Rock Tunnel is really where you start going, all right, I'm, I'm, I have enough Pokemon planned that I can skip this one. I can skip that. I need to catch these two. Like all that kind of math starts to happen. Um, and when you're doing like actual like PB attempts, this is really like a make it or break it part of the run, uh, just because you need to balance that. Like, I need these catches to fill out the catch count, but I also need to like leave because standing here in one spot not moving isn't advancing the game. Uh, and so there's that balance you have to kind of deal with. So for both these fights on Route 9, you and Pika, you would actually two controller both. Um, there's some pretty nasty bonds like Gloom and Sandshrew, which Pikachu can't handle on its own, so you need to use Growlithe or Kadabra here as well. So and, uh, They present their own sets of challenges. You can have ranges to deal with, um, and uh, it can get quite scary in certain cases. But as you can see in Eevee, just uh, one controller everything. Yeah, and something we didn't really mention earlier is that EV throughout, um, basically from the time we teach Headbutt, is kind of conserving Headbutt PP so that by the time we get to this point, uh, we still have enough Headbutts to use, uh, for instance, on the EV from the uh, previous trainer and the Raticate uh, on Camper Drew. And then as we get to the next section, we will get a... Um, full heal with all our PP restored. Um, so we're taking the headbutt PP down to the wire. Good start for T-Pat with the Krabby. Krabby did not move around, which is good. <laughs> they can do that. Nidoran on Razor screen, it's a glowing one, so... Yeah, Krabby's one of those mods that needs four levels to evolve, I think, so it's, uh, it's gonna be in your party a little while. But as I think I get mentioned earlier, it's one of those mods that's probably the most levels you're gonna put on it in your party. That is very strange. It's just barely... Dodge the dinner, the dinner, barely dodge the ball. But yeah, you'd normally not go more than four levels. Yeah, which yeah, is why it's extra beneficial that the crab is first outro. spawn. Mm -hmm. Nice little bonus there. Let's see, level 15, definitely worth keeping that in the party for, uh, for the evolution. Oh, Ooh, first team. Don't do it, T Pat. <laughs> Don't do it, T-Pat. 
T Pat? No. He's thinking about it. He's thinking about it. <laughs> T Pat? <laughs> oh, he got the wrong encounter. All right, so something hopefully doesn't happen. All right, good. So something that can happen is if you encounter two Pokemon, like basically at the same time, uh, it is possible for one of them to despawn. <laughs> so that would be really rough if that happened. Um, it's very rare. I think I've had it happen to me like twice ever, uh, but very lucky that it didn't happen. Um, but yeah. Uh, the Spearow there is a really good catch. Um, it looks like T-Pat doesn't have the Nidoran Mail yet, um, but has pretty much everything else that you can hope for here on Route 10. Um, although, T-Pat did catch an early rat, and this is a place where catching a uh, Raticate can be very useful. Uh, we see him going for right now. Raticate is a nice little experience bump. Um, so he's going to elect to Raz it. With a Raz, this should be basically a guaranteed catch. Um, I think it's like 90%, 88 or so, uh, without the Raz. So just a little bit of safety there. Um, and I agree with chat. Big Rat is better than the Chansey. The Chansey here has an abysmal catch rate. <laughs> I was going to say, maybe if the Bellsprout and Spiral evolved off that Raticate, you could deposit and then go for the Chansey, but... Uh, we'll see what he does. 57% according to Etchy with a Raz. Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> that's, that, that's good information for me, I guess. For uh, for the future, for a lot of people. For 10, maybe not a good idea to catch Chansey. Looks like Razor's done catching for now. He's gonna go do the rocket fight. You can actually load up this rocket fight, which despawns everything on the route above. If you uh, get some unlucky spawns, like you get four of the same thing or something like that, you need I want to go back for a couple extras. It's a bit slow, but it's a good way to sort of reset the, the route without using a repel, which you might want to save for later. Quite a lot of animosity in the chat towards Team Pat for skipping the Chansey. No, I agree wholeheartedly with skipping the Chansey. <laughs> All right, so it looks like Razor is going to go back up to uh, Route 10. So something uh, I had to step away, so I don't know if, you, if anyone mentioned, but... Um, Something you'll see a lot of runners do here when they first get to Route 10 uh, is they'll actually wait and they won't catch the first thing that spawns. Um, that's because there is a, a mechanic in the game called catch chaining where the Pokemon that you have just caught, um, you'll be on a catch chain of and those Pokemon will be more likely to spawn. I believe it takes up five extra percent of the encounter slots. Um, so because you have to catch a lot of things here on Route 10, uh, people will generally sort of sit there and wait for all four things to spawn. Uh, the area can only spawn four things at a time. Uh, that number changes from route to route, so it's not four everywhere. Uh, but for route 10 specifically, it is four. And so they'll wait for four things to spawn and then go and catch the Pokemon. Um, that catch chain does persist basically through cutscenes, through battles and things like that. So uh, Razor going back up to route 10 uh, I believe was still on a Nidoran female catch chain, and that's why you saw two Nidoran females spawn uh, pretty quickly. Uh, a bit unfortunate, but it is something you got to deal with as a runner. So T Pat now into Rock Tunnel. Uh, Rock Tunnel has uh, a few catches that are, you know, really nice for the catch count purposes. Uh, so you've got. Zubat over here on keypad screen, uh, as well as Cubone and Machop. Both of them are four level uh, evolutions. Uh, and then you also have the Graveler. Graveler is going to be uh, a nice big boost to your experience. Um, the reason we don't catch Geodude here and instead catch uh, Geodude in Mount Moon and then Graveler here uh, is purely for experience reasons. 
Um, and then the most important catch, especially in Eevee version, is going to be Rhyhorn, because Rhyhorn is going to be our fast mode of transportation. There's no bike in this game, you have to ride Pokemon, and Rhyhorn is the first ride Pokemon that is reasonable to obtain. I'm saying that on purpose. Aspect. And Joker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no one, no one opted for the early Arcanine. I know, weird, right? Um, but yeah, so, and it is one of those things, um, as soon as you see a Rhyhorn, you absolutely catch it, and you absolutely put it in your party, uh, immediately menuing, and uh, mark it as your ride Pokemon. The earlier you get it into Rock Tunnel, the better. Um, if you don't see one, um, you basically lose about 40... 40 to 45 seconds on movement, um, assuming essentially last room Rhyhorn to first grass patch encounter of Ponyta. So uh, very nice to see one. Got one pretty early here for Razor. That is great to see. We also, we also saw in Sheep's screen, he caught a Nidorino, which is... Uh... Uh, kind of similar to Raticate, it's a nice little uh, experience boost, and if you do Raspberry with two greats and an excellent, it's a pretty guaranteed catch, or close to, if not that, so uh, that's a nice little bonus to have. Yeah, Onyx here in Rock Tunnel, I think I mentioned it in Mount Moon. Uh... Onyx in Rock Tunnel is not a very good catch. Uh, it's way more common. I believe it's like a 10% encounter versus the 1% in Mount Moon. Um, but unless people are absolutely desperate for catches, uh, you're not going to be many. You're not going to be seeing many people catch an Onyx here in Rock Tunnel. And it looks like Sheep is cleaning up. Um, the final catches here on Route 10. Uh, looks like he got everything except for Krabby. Uh, did I didn't see it on the screen, but it has a Nidorino marked and not a Nidoran male. So I don't know if he yeah. decided yeah. to catch that or okay. Yeah, that's that's what I think happened. Yeah, that was his oh, yeah, first encounter, and I wasn't sure if he intentionally ran into it or just he saw it, ran into it accidentally, and just went with it. Yeah, those those for middle Pika version you oh. want for Pika version you want one Nidoran, um, and sometimes I'll catch. I try to catch both sometimes when I see them, but sometimes I'll go for the the big the big Nido as my second one just for the experience. I don't see the small version because the uh, the Nido King slash Nido Queen is such a good partner, and we might see some Nido King uh, strats here on Eevee version. Uh, there are there's some cases where um, you might do that in Eevee, but uh, it's much much more common in Pika. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and catching those middle stage evolutions like the Nidorino, Nidorina, uh, is one of those things that's just way more possible and way more viable now that we do the double Great Ball stuff. Pretty much all of those middle stages are going to have the same, roughly the same catch rate. Uh, so like things like Graveler, uh, Nidorino, Nidorina, uh, Raticate isn't a middle stage, but it's kind of a similar boat. Um, those all just got so much better with double great balls we used to only catch graveler and we basically did it purely for that experience bump and now basically all these are viable so although if you do plan on using the nido king in battle catching a nidorino is not necessarily the best play um it, it's one of those things you do if you have to but the nidoran male comes with poison jab where nidorino does not and Poison Jab is going to be the main attacking move for Nidoking later on, so you kind of lose out on that. You would instead learn Thrash, which is the same effective power, um, being like 120 power versus 80, but with Stab. Um, but you lose that super effectiveness against like the Clefairy later on. So There's a Rhyhorn yeah. for T-Pat. Looks like, Sheep's look looks like he's catching everything on Route 10. <laughs> yeah, I think the only thing... Only thing he didn't catch is uh, Nidoran Mail and got the Nidorino instead, so. Oh, he's repelling as well. That is interesting. Let's see the one for. Well, there's the Nidoran Mail. So. Oh, there you go. Did, it, did, everyone, did anyone have catch all the possible spawns on their bingo card? Yeah. 
Except I don't think he caught Firo. Firo's a very bad catch. But you'd only do that if you're absolutely desperate. Yeah, Amber in chat mentioning uh, a little bit worried about Razor's ball count. So because you're using the double Great Balls, you burn through these Great Balls super quickly. So uh, it is really easy to kind of, if you miss a couple throws here and there, you end up with just way less uh, of your Great Ball count than normal. Um, the nice thing is after this area, I believe it is the cadaver girl uh, ace trainer sophia gives you five ultra balls so you can always switch to ultra balls once you get past that point um and then there are a few ultra ball pickups that you can do after you leave rock tunnel uh but in general if you still have catches to do in rock tunnel and you are out of great balls or really close to out of great balls uh it can be a little bit nerve-wracking so uh, it does look like just looking at the catch tracker here i think graveler is the only pokemon left to catch here in rock tunnel um and hopefully um, it looks like there's four Great Balls left, so think should be okay. Uh, hopefully this gets in. Alright, perfect. Yeah, so Razor should be done with catches here in Rock Tunnel. 30, 30 Pokemon caught, leaving Rock Tunnel. Uh, 31 actually, it looks like, because of the Zubat evolving. That's a pretty good count. Experience is a little low. Only being level 24 is not the best. You usually want to be closer to 25, 26. Um, let's see where T-Pad is level-wise. Okay, T-Pad's T-Pad's about... Entering rock tunnel, which is very high, but... Yep. Gives lots of options. Pat getting through one of the scarier fights here in Rock Tunnel. Um, that fight has a couple of different ways to control you. You can either get burned from the Vulpix, you can get confused by Psybeam. Uh, there's a lot that can go wrong. If you elect to do a two controller fight in Eevee, uh, you generally don't outspeed the Kadabra, and the Kadabra can pretty much one shot anything that is going to be standing next to you. Um, Ooh, nice dance around that hiker for Razor. <laughs> oh, yeah. So it looks like T-Pat uh, is going to be a 31 Pokemon Rock Tunnel exit uh, around 116 and a half. After the start he had, um, this is honestly a pretty good tunnel exit time. Um, you know, tunnel exit is really one of the first areas where you can be like, all right, this is what actual pace we're on. Um, it's kind of silly to, to really worry about your pace too much before entering tunnel. Uh, just because so much can change with all the different catches. But this is going to be a long section with uh, little to no catches and just a lot of just sheer battling, um, sort of like your traditional Pokemon speedrunning stuff. So. And moving on to Rival 4. So... Pokemon Let's Go requires you to enter uh, Rocket, or not Rocket Hideout, uh, enter Pokemon Tower and fight your rival before Rocket Hideout uh, is enabled. Uh, so we do have to take a little bit of a detour here and do this fight earlier than you would in like Gen 1, for example. Uh, and we're going to do this as a two controller fight. So this is one of the few fights that Eevee does get some help from uh, other Pokemon. So uh, we're going to be two controllering this fight. And the way it typically goes is you can KO the Pidgeotto at plus two with Buzzy Buzz. Uh, so you just do X special Buzzy Buzz. And then depending on which Pokemon comes out second, you either are going to plus two Sizzly Slide the Gloom, or you're going to plus two Drill Run with the Rhyhorn um, against the Raichu. And so uh, this is one of those few fights where, you know, having a Rhyhorn is both good for movement speed as well as like this specific fight. Uh, because if you don't have Rhyhorn, you pretty much have to waste one turn. So. Alright, 
stupid stuff there. Apparently there was a Kanga on Razor's screen, but I don't expect him to go for it because of his ball hand. Yeah. Yeah, Kanga's one of those catches. It's Depending on your situation, it could be worth it, but generally it's not going to be. It's only one catch. Instead, like, you don't evolve it, um, and it's a pretty... Uh, pretty tough one to actually catch in terms of catch rate, so. But if you don't get the Rhyhorn, you can ride the Kanga instead. <laughs> you can <laughs> ride the Kanga instead. Is it even faster than walking? I, really I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> we got uh, Randall in the chat for, for uh, I don't know if it was on Mother's Day or on the Mother's Day weekend. He uh, he rode Kanga in a race. It was quite quite cool. Good meme. It's slower, Randall would know. <laughs> so I believe, yeah, when you're riding Kanga, you sit on its shoulder and then Pika sits in the pouch with the baby. It's kind of cute. All right, so Razor exiting tunnel here. Uh, same Pokemon count as T-Pat. Uh, so they are officially like tied, quote unquote, when it comes to count. Uh, so we can see the actual time ahead that T-Pat is. Uh, looking like a little under three minutes. Um, obviously, anything can happen, but uh, that is that is a pretty comfortable lead for T-Pat, so hopefully you can keep it up. Interesting. It's good. Okay. Uh, T-Pat opting to put uh, a chop in slot two for the upcoming rocket fight, whereas Razor looks like he's doing some Nido King strats. Yeah. Uh, anyone who's been following T-Pat during the tournament prep knows that this this section here uh, with Rocket Hideout is just a section that he's been having a lot of trouble with. Um, so there are definitely a few ways to go through this. You can do it with solo Eevee. You can do it um, with Nidoking, you can do some Nidoking Rhyhorn stuff, uh, which is what you'll pretty much see a lot of the Pikachu runners do. Um, there's this uh, version of a fight coming up where you use the Machop if you caught one. Lots of different ways to handle it. Um, hopefully the game is a bit nicer to T-Pat than it has been lately. Um, we'll see. We also get to see a Metronome here. Uh, if you have Nitto King, you can one-shot this. If you have level 28 and Double Edge, you can one-shot it. Uh, but if you are level 26, it is a two-shot. Metronome Gust, okay. Not too bad. There are definitely Not some wacky things you can moves, see. But I don't want to, definitely uh, could be worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> are they getting toxic or something? I think you got Metronome Growl yesterday oh, or yeah, something. Uh, so it ended up being a three turn fight like it was <laughs> game just does not like him here. On that route that T-Pat was just on, you can also uh, pick up a Firestone in the uh, in the grass area. You have to cut a bush to get a couple bushes to get to it. Uh, that's a nice little backup uh, if you don't have a Rhyhorn on Pika version because you can get Arcanine. Uh, but uh, you probably wouldn't see any Eevee runners go in that bush at all. Yeah, it's it's pretty heavily dependent. Um, one of the nice things about uh, Eevee specifically is so pretty much all of the catches in Rock Tunnel, as well as after Rock Tunnel, are gonna come in pairs. So you've got like Ghastly plus Haunter, Psyduck plus Golduck, uh, Coughing plus Wheezing. And so if you have something like 51 planned, you either have to like catch something and deposit it or catch the higher evolution or something weird like that. Um, having Ninetales, uh, if you have a Vulpix and can evolve into Ninetales, um, it's nice to have that flex option to say like, I'll fix my even Pokemon count by either evolving or not evolving Ninetales, uh, because there is a Firestone, uh, both in that grass, like Iron was saying, as well as in the Pokemon Mansion, which is right, essentially, like, where you finish catching Pokemon. Uh, so at that point, you 100% know these are the 50 I'm getting, and you can decide at that moment, do I get Ninetales or do I not? 
It also looked like Razor's ED died on the Rebel fight. Uh, not sure what happened there specifically, but he had the shot that Nino King there finishing the fight off. So. Oh no, it's unfortunate. I did see he got paralyzed. Um, I hope that wasn't what did it. Yeah, that fight's done a bit. If you get that fight, you can do. It's a bit different if you do. If you have Nitto Queen or Nitto King as your partner, there's a couple options there. Uh, I'm assuming the Nitto King version of the fight is very similar uh, in EV to the to Pika. The main difference, obviously, is you're dealing with Jolteon in Pika and, and Raichu in uh, EV. So it looks like T-Pat's going to be doing this, the more standard, just solo EV stuff here in Hideout. Um, it's pretty good. It It's one of those things where if you have high experience or if you have really good stats, um, you can absolutely save time, a considerable amount of time over, uh, you know, over just having sort of like a standard experience, standard EV set. Um, and that, that's one of the reasons why something like Nitto King is appealing to to some, some runners. Um, like I myself like it because it's it's quite consistent. Um, it doesn't have like the the big swings that you have with uh, solo EV stuff. But getting the flinch there from the Hypno is awesome. Uh, this is another one of those fights. It can put you to sleep. It can confuse you. There's like a lot of stuff that can happen. So getting through that with a flinch and just a headbutt. Gas too, maybe. Oh geez, sure. yeah. I don't know if it has poison gas, but it yeah. wouldn't surprise me if it did. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> Let's see and here you've got Razor doing King strats. Uh, so this is one of those fights where Nidoking King is a very obvious uh, advantage over any Eevee. Um, poison jab, one shot. You don't have to see Metronome. No chance of troll. Razor's going into the bush. Yeah, I know Razor doesn't have a Vulpix yet, so um, maybe trying to find a Vulpix here. The the spawns here on Route 7 and 8, uh, this is Route 8, Route 7's on the other side, um, are pretty much the same spawns that you get on Route 6. So um, those Vulpix, the Jigglypuff, the Abra, those all have a chance of spawning here as well. So grabbing that Firestone probably just for the future, um, and then essentially hoping to find a Vulpix here uh, when he comes out on Route 7. And it looks like it paid off. Yeah, there we go. Awesome to see. There's nothing worse than making a gamble like that and then just not even seeing the Vulpix. Oh, the game should have given that a great. I'm a little upset on Razor's behalf. <laughs> Keep that just barely missing uh, one. Disable. Disable from Grimer. Disable's better than some other options. Um, minimize. Sure. Yeah, minimize uh, Sludge Poison. There's a strat in Pika. I'm not, I'm not sure if it's done in, uh, in EV, but you use, you're using Rhyhorn for quite a bit here, and I think for J&J, &J, you would probably definitely do this. I assume you'd do this in EV as well, where you would use Rhyhorn in 2C, the potentially even one controller if you have good enough attack. Or maybe it's the lower end of attack, I'm not sure. But you would use Rhyhorn for that R Grimer fight, and the Grimer can outspeed Rhyhorn, <laughs> so... Hmm. Not pleasant. Yeah, I typically... I typically approach it... If I'm doing Nidoking strats, the way I typically will do it is I'll just two... I'll have Eevee in slot two, um, and then going into that fight, I'll two controller it, and then Helping Hand plus Glitzy Glow, uh, which we didn't mention, but that's going to be the move that uh, Razor either just taught or is about to teach. Um to Eevee here in Celadon uh, Pokemon Center. Yeah, must have just taught it. 
Um, so doing that helping hand glitzy glow can also KO. Um, generally, that's that, that kind of a thing is good. Uh, there's a lot of different strategies you can do here. Um, even with like, all right, I'm doing solo EV stuff. You can still do a lot of different strategies um, that really depend on things like, am I already at full health? Do I need to heal? Uh, and things like that, because uh, if you're already at full health, for example, on that Grimer fight, being able to guarantee that you take no damage on the fight is nice because that means you don't have to worry about menuing um, between that fight and Jesse and James, which is where T-Pat's heading now. So uh, definitely a lot of decision making to make here in Hideout, uh, specifically an EV version. I think Pika does have some uh, decision making, but it's really easy to, to gain or lose time in EV just because of like, oh, I did this version of the fight instead of the other one. Um, and yeah, so T-Pat's going to make his way to Jesse and James 2. Uh, Jesse and James 2 and 3 are both two of like the most awkward and semi-dangerous fights in the run. Um, again, like I was just saying, there are a couple of different ways you can approach it. Um, the old strategy that you might see some runners do, uh, depending on what version of the notes they're running, uh, involves using a Pokemon like a Jigglypuff as your second slot, uh, which will essentially bait Jesse and James to target the Jigglypuff instead of the Eevee or Pikachu, um, giving you more or less a free turn before you take any damage. Um, T-Pat here, let's see which version he's doing. Uh, he's going to do the Glitzy Go fight. So, um, this is the current standard version of the fight in Eevee. Uh, it's going to involve using Glitzy Glow, turn one, to set up that light screen. Um, got the crit on the Arbok to get the two turn, or the, the one turn there against the Arbok. That is not common. Uh, that would not have KO'd without a crit, so that crit was definitely very necessary. Um, and then KOing the Weezing here at plus four special attack. Um, there's also a strategy where you can do plus two drill run uh, to KO the Arbok and then drill run and either helping hand if you're using Nidoking or uh, and Glitzy Glow to get rid of the Weezing. So lots of different strategies here. Um, great to see the two turn there. That is that is awesome. Um, next up is Archer 1. Uh, so Archer 1 used to be, uh, back before we allowed two controllers, uh, used to be one of the worst fights in the entire run. Uh, now it's still, it's not like the best fight in the world, but it's a lot safer than it used to be. Um, this fight is typically just going to be set up X special, uh, either one or two of them, depending on how you're feeling, and then uh, KO the Weezing and the Golbat. Uh, Weezing can go down in one hit if you have high special. Um, but it looks like T-Pat is going to heal turn one. Probably doesn't have a very good range. Um, and that crit there is unfortunate. Uh, just time wasty. It's not, uh, you know, it's not something that you, you don't need the Rhyhorn necessarily. Um, so I'm going to set up that X special here. All right, there we go. Also, I did, I don't know if anyone else caught it, the, like, two Abras on Sheep screen as they were going into uh, Celadon City. Already caught an Abra. But that's something you love to see. It looks like Sheep is opting to teach Glitzy Glow over Sizzly Slide, whereas I believe the others taught Glitzy Glow over Buzzy Buzz. Yeah, this is a more recent addition to the route. Um, the old way we would do Jesse and James, uh, which is probably what you'll see on Sheep's screen when he gets there, is um, you buzzy buzz the Arbok turn one, which allows you to outspeed it turn two. Um, and you essentially only give the Arbok one turn that way instead of two. 
Uh, the downside to it, and the reason why the current version of the fight does work, is um, because you're not using Glitzy Glow turn one, you don't have your light screen set up for turn one. And that wheezing can do a decent amount of damage. So uh, you really need that Pokemon that you can sacrifice in slot two. Otherwise, you you basically run the risk of getting targeted by the Arbok and the Weezing without a light screen. Um, and that is just not a very pleasant thing to have happen. So um, it is a little bit slower, uh, both in the Jesse and James fight, as well as this Giovanni fight that you're seeing T-Pat do. Uh, this is the fight that really uses Sizzly Slide to our advantage, um, removing essentially half of the attack power of the Pokemon. Um, a little bit risky there for T-Pat. Uh, I don't know exactly what the range was uh, with the crit on Slash. Uh, it looks like based on the amount of damage it might have killed, but uh, pretty reasonable risk to go for. And then healing right back up here on the right one, so you don't even have to worry about the next fight, uh, which does have like a Sucker Punch option. Here we go, through Rocket Hideout. Hopefully he feels alright about that hideout. I think that hideout went pretty well. Um, obviously the little bit of a mishap on Archer that caused the, the Rhyhorn and Machop to die. Uh, Machop should still gain enough experience. There's a free heal that we're going to get in Pokemon Tower. Um, so it's not really worth reviving it special. Then you'll probably see T-Pat pick up the extra Ultra Balls here. Um, I think I would if I were in his position. Oh, no. He's so opting to skip them. Okay. Um, yeah, there, there are two Ultra Ball pickups you can get. Uh, so you're given five for beating uh, Sophia in Rock Tunnel. Uh, and then you can either pick up five while you're exiting Hideout, or you can pick up three at the top of Pokemon Tower. Uh, the Pokemon Tower ones are way faster to get, so a lot of runners will opt to do that, but depending on your catch count, you will sometimes want to pick up the full 10. Um, yeah. Uh, actually, I guess T-Pat's catch count's not too bad. I didn't see he doesn't have Ghastly marked as planned, so if he just happens to get a Ghastly, that's really good. Um... As well as he does have a nice option in a Route 17 Pidgey, uh, which Route 17 Pidgey is nice because it can evolve all the way up into Pidgeot. So it's, a, it's a, essentially like a three for one. All right, Razor coming up with uh, his hideout J and J fight. Even though uh, Razor isn't using Rhyhorn, is using Nidoking instead, the fight's going to look uh, mostly the same with Eevee using Glitzy Glow and then uh, using Nidoking's turn to basically buff Eevee and let Eevee sweep. Yeah, Nidoking going down here is not that big of a deal. Uh, Nidoking was more just the second Pokemon, uh, not really something that you're using all that much anymore. So there's the heal pad for T-Pat. Um, actually going to go all the way back to grab this Ghastly. Um, I would not do this in a any percent PB attempt, uh, but for a race, absolutely respect this. Uh, just the guaranteed catch. Uh, the only downside is, like I said, it is a, quite a bit out of the way. So 
Nice throw. Hey, Ghastly's one I try to avoid if I can, just because it's... It can be a little bit annoying. Sometimes it's not good to... Sometimes it just doesn't spawn, so it's not something you really want to rely on, but you have, always have backups. But it's usually one of the first ones I remove from my plan, Druid, if I get some bonuses. Yeah, so T-Pat's in a nice position right now. Um, just catch count-wise. Uh, of, essentially, Pidgey... Um, coughing, Doduo, Tentacool, and Psyduck, he's allowed to skip two. Um, so being able to skip two Pokemon at this point is pretty nice. Um, you know, if you... There are absolutely cases where you'll come out of Rock Tunnel and be like, alright, I have to catch absolutely everything, and you either have to sit there on Route 17 waiting for stuff to spawn, um, or resort to catching some stuff like Tangela or Magmar, Ditto which is never a position you want to be in, especially in a race. Um, so, if, if I were T-Pat right now, I'd feel pretty comfy with this catch route. Grabbing that safety hyper potion, I like that. Um, it's really easy to take a lot of damage here on this next Jesse and James fight. Uh, my most recent PB from a couple days ago actually died to this fight. Um, it is effectively the same as the one in, um, in Rocket Hideout, but it does, like, they're just higher level, uh, so your ranges are a little bit worse, the damage that you're going to be taking is a bit worse, um, so having that extra Hyper Potion in the bag is really nice. Sheep's going for Rhyhorn here on J and J. Two. are just barely hanging on for the person's person slash but manages to eke it out yeah that is a definitely a scary fight um also the fact that his ev wasn't 28 yet is rough this is usually like you really want to have 28 for the jesse and james fight let alone you know this two fights later so so that fight in, in pika is kind of funny you to, to see it, you set up X attacks on the first turn, on both using both your bonds, and then X attack again on turn two, and then Zippy Zap version. Uh, that fight uh, with without two C would be very brutal. And the plus six is more important for the Rhyhorn because you have to double kick it. Yeah, it's like double kick with helping hand. Helping hand, yeah. At plus six is how you have to do it. <laughs> All right, so T-Pat finishing off Jesse and James. Um, and is now going to a pretty interesting section of the run where uh, we are basically going to finish out our catches between Route 17 and Route 21 in Mansion. Um, but we have no battles to do between that whole section, so... Uh, you're actually going to see the Eevee get deposited here. Um, and we're essentially going to have no main Pokemon uh, for this whole stretch of the run. So it's a very punishing section to accidentally run into a trainer. Uh, we saw one of the racers yesterday run into one of the optionals on the water route. Um, as well as actually on Route 17. Um, and they are both higher level as well as just, like I said, you don't have a main Pokemon. So uh, you don't really have an option to, to fight with. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it is 
kind of absurd the level bump that you're going to get here. So uh, this Jesse and James fight, the two Pokemon were level 34. Uh, the next Pokemon we catch is going to be level 39. <laughs> uh, it is such a significant boost. And then we're going to be main switching pretty soon to a level 43 Pokemon. Uh, all before our next fight. So Sheep about to go take on Giovanni. Uh, I'm not sure. All right, so he's going to go in. Uh, I saw he has Double Edge uh, rather than Sizzly Slide. So there is a way through this fight with Double Edge. It's a bit scarier for sure. Um, hopefully he can pull it off. Unfortunately, no one in this race going for boom strats on Giovanni. That's what I thought was going to happen on Sheep's screen um, when I saw no Sizzly slide, but... Oh, interesting. Looks like uh, maybe a little bit of a mistake there. Yeah, I'm guessing he thought he still had Sizzly slide and... Uh went to that slot, but uh, Glitzy Glow was there instead. Yeah. Um, it's an easy enough mistake to make. Uh, older versions of the route would um, keep uh, Buzzy Buzz and teach over Sizzly Slide. Um, and so he may have had that version of the menu in Celadon uh, Pokemon Center, and then um, had the new version of the fight that uses Sizzly Slide here on this battle. So, uh, decent improvisation of uh, the fact that you can go through uh, and two controller on pretty much any fight that you're in a sticky situation with uh, makes this, you know, a, a nice, nice little safety net to have. And some more animosity from chat that T Pad skipped another Chansey. Route 16 is worse than Route 17 Chansey. You have to cut a bush to get there. Chat, chat, come on. You're better than this. <laughs> All right. Um, two biggest uh, catches here on Route 17 are going to be Doduo and uh, Ponyta. Ponyta is going to turn into a Rapidash. That's going to be our new ride Pokemon for the run. Um, and then Doduo is a Pokemon that we can use on one of the battles later on uh, to have a safer version of a fight uh, that you can use Rapidash for, but it is typically... Uh, a lot safer to use Dodrio for. Uh, and then the other two catches that we might see are going to be Psyduck, um, if he sees that, as well as Pidgey. Um, not seeing a Pidgey does make the catch route a little bit awkward. Um, seeing it is perfect. Oh, there it is, perfect. Um, but because this is a three for one catch instead of a two for one, uh, you kind of have to do some adjustment, get rid of the Firestone, potentially catch two extra pairs of Pokemon. Uh, so having a Pidgey spawn is awesome. Razor, unfortunately, getting the double heal pad. That's where if you approach it from just the wrong angle you will take one step onto the heel pad and then basically the next step will also take you onto the heel pad from neutral uh healing you twice and just uh wasting a second or two oh he thought about the rapid ash mm-hmm Oh, he's doing it! Oh, there oh. he is. Let's go, t -Pat. Randall in the chat will be happy. <laughs> For almost two years, the Eevee record had a Rapidash catch. So this is not exactly the wildest thing in the world. Um, 
but it is not. Oh, it worked. Uh, so this does mean he has to get an extra catch somewhere um, because he's missing the Ponyta. Um, so either. I think probably what you do is either uh, catch a Ponyta if you see it or um, skip Ponyta and then catch essentially Tentacool and skip the Firestone. I think those are probably the two options. Um, assuming he doesn't see a Psyduck. If he sees a Psyduck, then that can take the Tentacool spot. He does skip. He does skip having to use a candy on the pony to evolve it right away. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if everybody does that. I know some roots do. Uh, I'm not sure if they all do, but that's another nice bonus getting out of that. Yeah, in uh, in Eevee, you pretty much have to candy the ponytail right away. Um, just the movement speed is too too nice. In Pika, you do have the option of having the Arcanine by now, um, and so you'll you'll a lot of times see runners skip the candy altogether on the ponyta and instead just ride uh, Arcanine until ponytail evolves naturally. So is there going to be any extra benefit for T-Pets that he's going to have this extra rare candy to possibly use? Um, yeah, so I mean, T-Pet can either skip picking up the candy um, or depending on how his star me or like his star you stats are, uh, could elect to just use an extra candy. Uh, the, the main problem with using an extra candy is um, it increases your friendship and friendship um, has a negative side effect for speedrunning in that if you get too high friendship uh, you start getting these like little turnarounds that happen um, when you use a super effective move or when you have to heal in battle um, and an extra rare candy means that you're going to end up having those turnarounds happen a full fight sooner uh, which will waste about 8 seconds so um, it's really not something you want to do I think you will do it if your star is bad. Um, but it's it's hard to see right now. Uh, luckily, that, that rare candy that you would be skipping is is all the way like in Silphco. So it's it's not anytime soon. Uh, you don't have to make that decision now. You can you can wait quite a bit before you make that decision. So it sounds like that means Lapras skip is on the table. Uh, you could. I, Lapras is, I think, just still worth getting. Um, but that would be the candy to skip, yeah? Alright, so T-Pat looking at 40 caught right now. Um, pretty respectable sea skim uh, catch count. You know, typically you're in the range from, like, Maybe 39 to 42 here. Um, so 40 is right in the right ballpark. Uh, only has to catch the Staryu uh, as well as a coughing. So hopefully, hopefully a nice, nice quick Blaine split here as well. Meanwhile, Razor's about to do um, his version of Route 17. And then Sheep looks like is approaching the top of Pokemon Tower to fight Jesse and James. So, you know, there is some separation between the racers, but honestly, everyone is you know in the same ballpark. Uh, nice power Cubone. Uh, I believe Sheep already has a Cubone, but still fun to see. start here for Razor with the Psyduck uh, first spawn. Psyduck's one of those Pokemon that you like really want to get on Route 17, but it's like a 10%, 15%. It could just not spawn um, if you get unlucky. Ooh, that should have been an excellent. Well, 
Luckily, the experience doesn't matter too much. That's another optional encounter, or accidental encounter for T-Pad. Uh, T-Pad also only has one Ultra Ball left, so... Um, does have two things left to catch. Is probably going to have to do double Great Balls on the Coughing, uh, which is fine. It's not that bad of a catch rate. Um, but it's a little bit more dicey with the star you catch because, um, as you mentioned earlier in the run, uh, water encounters can only be one controller. You cannot two controller water catches. Uh, so you lose that extra catch rate from the other uh, Pokeball. So uh, we should see a Silver Raz here. Um, this makes the catch rate a whole lot better, and we basically have to sit and wait for attack. Perfect throw. And one catch left for T-Pad. Um, I did not see the CP value for the Staryu, but uh, according to Phoenix, Melior, and Chat, it's 1068. Uh, that's about average. Um, CP is combat power. It is a stat from Pokemon Go that was brought into Pokemon Let's Go that basically is some sort of formula using the actual stat values of the Pokemon. Um, so there's a range with a level 43 star. Uh, it's going to be anywhere from like 960-ish to about 1160. So 1068 would be almost exactly average. I think we said last night 1062 is perfectly average. So uh, there, that is no indication that the good stats are the ones that you care about. Uh, you could have a star that is like 1100, which is awesome to see. And then all of that stat went into HP and defense <laughs> um, rather than special defense and speed or special attack and speed. But uh, we'll get to see the stats pretty soon on this next menu. Yeah, and then another note from chat. Just because you have a low CP value does not mean that the star is not actually good. Um... It really just depends on where those stats, those good or bad stats, ended up. Oh, I thought Razor was about to also go for the Rapid Ash. It spawned on him. That's one of those things, if I didn't have a pony yet, I actually probably would have caught that. <laughs> All right, so T-Pat doing the menu here. Let's check these stats. We've got... Oh, mm. no, T-Pat. Not great. Uh, yeah, so... Oh. Um, most likely going to get outsped by the Rapidash. Um, on Blaine. And then the special attack is nothing good either. Um... I don't know if T-Pat was thinking there to maybe use all four rare candies early. Um, that could be an option. The only issue with using the four candies early um, is you end up slightly behind the experience curve. Um, so generally what we do is we'll use either two candies early and two candies late or three and one. Um, and when you use those later candies, uh, you get up to level 49. Uh, I believe if you do four candies and zero later, uh, you'll be just shy of 49. So you're like a little bit behind the experience curve. Not much, probably like one Pokemon uh, difference in your level ups. Uh, but it's one of those situations you're almost never in. So it's not really well documented exactly how it impacts uh, certain damage rolls. Um, I think I personally would do... Uh, three candies early and two candies late. So I think I would pick up the candy that T-Pat could skip by picking up the Rapid Ash. Um, mm -hmm. And I would ins instead actually use that candy. 
but that's just me. Uh, this yeah, star is sense. just not good. <laughs> and I'm not sure if that extra boost, having that extra level might be enough to possibly scald some things on Koga. Uh, yeah, it. Um, that that's the main advantage that it's going to have. Um, because normally what we do is we candy up to level 49 for Koga's gym. Uh, you'd instead be level 50. And 50 gets a little bit of a damage boost over level 49, so... Um, it's uh, definitely an option. We'll see if he does it. Um, again, he doesn't have to decide basically until Sylphco, so... Um, all right, so it looks like Razor's finishing up C-Skim split as well uh, at 41 cut. So again, anywhere from 39 to 42 is standard, so that's a pretty good catch count. Uh, Sheep is sitting at 38 right now, uh, still on Route 17, uh, at the beginning of Route 17, so probably going to be around the same threshold. T-Pat skipping the Firestone, which he's able to do because of the Rapidash catch. Something actually, I don't know. Check something. Okay, good. Um, something I wasn't sure about is, so the issue that we mentioned earlier with like catching a Nidoran versus a Nidorino and having Poison Jab versus not having Poison Jab, um, I wasn't sure if Rapidash was the same way, uh, where there is a strategy, it's a little bit riskier, uh, but you can opt to use Fire Blast against Blue later on in Sylphco. Um, the Rapidash does have Fire Blast. I was a little bit worried that it wouldn't, but it looks like it should. Razor going for Tentacool. This is a catch that a lot of people try to avoid. Is it? Uh, it likes to move around. It's not the greatest. Hopefully, it his flame pre still. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's uh, it's one of those catches you'll see. You'll see people uh, differ on how they approach it. Some people will uh, nanab it to try and get the excellent throw, where other people will either Raz or Silver Raz, and then just try to hit the circle at all. Um, sort of up to preference. Um, I think the odds are slightly better getting just like a straight up excellent versus a, a standard Raz. I'm not sure about a Silver Raz. Um, but yeah. 1055 CP per Razor. A little bit lower than the T pad, I think. But yeah. again, that's that doesn't, that doesn't say much <laughs> until we see the stats. Uh, nice little Eevee spawn there on uh, Sheep Screen. Eevee is obviously. Um, not the best catch if you're playing on Pokemon Let's Go Eevee, just because you uh, already have the Eevee caught. But on Pikachu version, uh, catching an Eevee can be useful uh, because you can pick up the Firestone in Mansion and then Firestone into Flareon. So uh, it's a tougher catch. Um, it is, you know, notorious for just being a little bit of a troll, especially in like all obtainable Pokemon category. Um, but you know, if it spawns, it's like a 5% spawn. Uh, that can definitely get you out of a sticky situation. That's one of those Pokemon like Abra you never plan on catching, but when it shows up, you're like, well, this fixes some things. <laughs> Alright, nice catch here for Razor. Uh, I'm looking at the catch tracker. This is the final Pokemon to be caught. Um, and actually doesn't need to evolve it, which is an interesting situation to be in. Uh, because he picked up the Firestone early for the Vulpix, um, basically already has that. 
So rather than skipping the nine tails like you probably would do in this situation, I'm instead going to skip the wheezing. So you'll see T-Pat uh, completing Blaine's gym as the third gym is now uh, onto the second part of his uh, the gym gauntlet of the route, where he'll be going back to Surge finally, and uh, you'll see greatly outleveling anything that Surge has to offer, and uh, just one-shotting everything. It'll be over very quickly. So the gym puzzle here is always the same. Just pick these two cans, don't accidentally talk to the trainer or walk into the vision of the other one. Um, something you might see maybe like, I'm gonna say five times total at most over the course of the tournament um, is some runners will elect to do Erica first and then Surge second. Um, it is faster to do Surge first and then Erica, um, mainly because you're going to be flying back to Celadon uh, in order to go into Saffron City. And so flying from Celadon to Celadon is just faster than flying the other way around. Um, but the benefit you get there is you can actually do the sort of final shop for the run earlier. Um, and by doing it earlier, you can get more healing items for Archer 2, uh, which is a notoriously bad fight. Um, it's one of those things, it's super situational. You're probably not, like I said, going to see it very often. Uh, it's really only, like, I am out of healing items uh, kind of situation to be in. So um, I don't think any of the runners here today are going to be doing it, but uh, it is something to sort of look for further into the tournament. I just noticed that Sheep actually kept uh, his fossil, so that is a route if he wants to take. Uh, he can revive the Omnine. Yeah, that that's a, that's a strategy I personally like, especially for races. Um, normally in Vermilion City early on, you would sell the Helix or Dome fossil. It sells for 3,500 Poké Dollars. Um, and the downside is you obviously don't have the ability to revive it later on. Um, if you instead pick up the PP up, uh, which sells for 5,000 Poké Dollars, so you get a little bit more money, uh, but obviously you spend time going to pick up the PP up. Uh, you can instead keep the fossil and use it as like a last ditch effort backup. Um, timing wise, it's about 20 seconds slower than a normal catch um, to revive the Ammonite. Um, but it is definitely something where you can get out of a sticky situation. Uh, one of the biggest situations I personally like it for is if I'm in a situation where I have to catch both Staryu, um, or I have to catch Staryu and Tentacool, if I get to the bottom of the route and I only have Staryu, um, rather than waiting for Tentacool, I'll just leave and eat the 20 seconds uh, to catch the Ammonite, because uh, waiting for stuff to spawn in the water is not the best. <laughs> um... But with that, Sheep just caught uh, his star, so we've officially seen all three stars. Uh, this one was a 1070, uh, which is the best of the three when it comes just to the CP value. Um, 
We'll have to wait and see the stats. I didn't see Razor's start. I don't know if anyone else in comms did. Yeah, we have aspects saying it's decent. Okay. Uh, yeah, 129 or 119 special attack, 123 speed. Uh, the big speed threshold you want to hit is you want to have 118 or higher. Uh, and that's because the Rapid Ash on Blaine has 117. There are other speed thresholds uh, that are nice to hit throughout the rest of the run, but they don't really change too much. Um, the main one on EV version is having enough speed to outspeed Rival 5's Raichu. Um, but that just like saves using an item in battle. It doesn't actually save like a, a full turn or anything. Yeah, it looks like Sheep's uh, star is kind of slow, uh, but pretty decent special attack. Uh, so it's likely going to take damage on Blaine, but uh, shouldn't have too much problems in the way of like offensive damage ranges. So now that T-Pat's finishing up uh, Erica's gym, we'll be moving on to Sylphco, and uh, I don't recall if he had Dodrio in slot 2, or if he's planning on doing that, or if he'll be going for the Fire Blast on our uh, blue. I know I know for Ted he did have Rapid Ash in 2, um, but I haven't seen the party since then. Rapid Ash in two is uh, is definitely faster. Um, you can see on Sheep screen uh, is doing that Ted fight we were just talking about. The main benefit of having Do Duo in slot two uh, is it's going to absolutely take a obliterating <laughs> Thunderbolt here, um, which shields the Starmy from taking it. Uh, it's not guaranteed to hit the Do Duo, but it almost always does. Uh, the downside, as you can see, is Do Duo will faint. And then you have to bring in another Pokemon, and so there's all these extra animations tied to it, as well as you have to revive that Doe Duo at some point. Um, you can either... There are a couple different options. You can either revive in battle, you can take the heal bed. Uh, there's also an extra rare candy you can pick up and just, you know, candy it that way. Um, but the upside to doing Doe Duo like that is this next fight that T-Pat's about to enter uh, becomes a whole lot safer. Um, the two ways through the Executor uh, for Blue's lead are either to X attack and drill peck, which is what you do with Dodrio, um, or you can X special attack and fire blast with the Rapidash. Fire blast is 85% accurate, so uh, it does have the chance of missing, and if it does miss, then uh, it almost always will set up a light screen, which then just makes the, the damage for the rest of the fight a little bit worse. We'll see what T-Pat's doing here. I think he still has the Rapid Ash in slot two. Totally respect it. Um, but we'll see. Oh, he does have the Dodrio. Okay, good. Didn't see the swap, but could have happened anywhere.
Yes, for the charge for the Charizard there, if you have good enough special attack, you can skip setting up uh, on the Dodrio's turn, so. Uh, and then you could also just go for a Hydro Pump. Not set up at all, but that's obviously an 85, 80% accurate move, so. There's T Pat getting. Is this the Pidgeot? Okay. T Pat has basically one evolution left to go. Um, luckily, basically, since Mansion, um, the obtaining Pokemon isn't really random anymore. Um, so you're just essentially spending that 30 seconds per catch, roughly. Um, but now T Pat's on his way to one of the worst fights in the entire run. Uh, this is a fight that. You can die to, but typically uh, what will happen is rather than killing you, the game will instead waste two minutes of your life. Um, so this is a true double battle, meaning that you only control one of the Pokemon uh, in a double battle. You have your rival as your partner. And there are a number of ways this fight can go. Uh, even turn one, turn one has three different ways it can go down. Um, either you get protect self-destruct, uh, which is kind of like a standard fight. You can also get protect or um, no protect self destruct, which is the best version of the fight. Or you can end up with no protect and thunderbolt, uh, which is a potentially fast but potentially scary way through the fight. So it uh, looks like we got no protect and thunderbolt. So this has the ability to be very fast. Uh, not getting paralyzed there is huge. Um, ideally, the Electrode will self-destruct here while T-Pat's probably going to heal. Uh, this Raticate has Sucker Punch. Uh, it actually only has priority moves, so it has Sucker Punch and Quick Attack, so you're pretty much always going to take damage. Sucker Punch being super effective, so... Um, and this is a perfect way for this fight to go so far. Uh, now, if the Cubone uses Bone Meringue, which is pretty likely... Boom. Raticate's dead, nice. and you basically just have to finish off the other side of the fight. That is a really good. wonderful fight. Uh, looks like Razor, just based on the uh, trainers in the gym, uh, actually hit the optional in the gym next to the um, the trash cans. So that's a little unfortunate. Um, obviously, we've got a star you or a star me now, and uh, are significantly over leveled for the third or canonically third gym of the game. It's still not something you want to see. And as T-Pad is progressing up uh, to the next Jesse and James fight, you'll see him uh, approaching these teleporters at very specific angles, trying to uh, eliminate that little stutter step that sometimes happens if you uh, approach it from an awkward angle. But if you approach it from straight on, you'll just glide right onto it and not have the extra animation that uh, wastes a second or two. Yeah, there's, there's two stutter steps that you can end up getting. Um, here you'll see T-Pat getting both of them, uh, having to center himself to get onto the tile, as well as center himself basically face down to actually do the teleporting. Um, so if you approach from the top and get on cleanly, it is, I think it's like three-ish seconds faster than essentially what just happened there. Um, it is a, a pretty tough thing to like get super consistently. Um, but luckily, there's only a handful of these tele teleporters in the game. Uh, they're here in Silphco as well as in Sabrina's gym. Um, and then that's really it. So uh, final Jesse and James fight. This is a much easier fight than all of the previous ones. Uh, it should just be a straight two turn. The only thing that can really go wrong here um, is this Weezing is always going to Thunderbolt um, and can end up paralyzing you. 
Uh, it's not that big of a deal. It's more just like you have to you have to menu twice. Uh, here, T Pat's gonna menu and use a super potion um, to go into full health. You want to be full health going into Giovanni here, uh, not because of Giovanni, but because of the fight afterward, uh, which is gonna be Sabrina. Giovanni uh, will typically use Fake Out turn one, and then you'll one shot the rest of his team. So. Uh, Taking that little bit of chip damage from Fake Out is much better than being like closer to half health going into Sabrina. There is the 48th Pokemon for T-Pat. Two more uh, Pokemon to obtain, and both of them are going to be gift Pokemon that are very fast to get. So, Similar to the Jesse and James fight uh, T-Pat just did, this Geo fight is going to be uh, the easiest one uh, of the run, uh, simply just setting up the next special and uh, scalding everything that comes out. So Razor are going to make their way over to Sylphco. Um, and Sheep, only one gym behind. Like, honestly, like I said uh, earlier, this is... Uh, you know, there's there's definitely some separation, but I think all of the runners are, are performing very well. I think uh, Razor might still be on PB pace, or at least close to it. Uh, Sheep is definitely on PB pace, uh, only being, like, maybe five minutes behind. Uh, did Razor forget the... Oh, no! Razor didn't pick up the the T from Brock. That is a really unfortunate mistake. Um, that is definitely a possible um, thing to have happen, but it's really tough to get through there without like triggering the cutscene by accident. So, a really unfortunate setback there. Um, Back gonna make his way out of Sylphco. Uh, like I said, two gift Pokemon. Uh, one of them's gonna be inside Sylph, one of them is outside, uh, as well as another rare candy pickup. So normally you would pick up this candy. Um, T Bat has an option to skip it just because he has the extra candy. I believe uh, he is going to take it just because his star is as bad as it is. Um, but if he doesn't pick it up, then I wouldn't be surprised. And he is, okay. So, um, now that T-Pat's leaving self, he's going to do essentially the final shop of the run. Uh, this shop here in Saffron is going to grab the rest of the X items you need for the run. Basically some X speeds, some X special defense, um, as well as, like, more than 30 X specials. Um, depending on the shopping route you do, you end up with, like, 100. It's pretty funny. Um... And then some Hyper Potions, and then conditionally some Full Heals. Uh, runners will elect to skip Full Heals, depending on how many status heals they still have in their bag. Um, because a lot of the, the statuses you could end up with from here to the end of the run are things that you already bought items for, like Paralyzed Heals and things like that. Um, however, uh, if you've already had to use a bunch of them just because of the earlier fights, then you can just buy some Full Heals here to, to sort of replenish that stock. And whether he buys X Defense and X Special Defense might tell us how he's thinking of approaching some later fights. It looks like he's skipping the Special Defense, uh, so this is going to be uh, essentially a safe version of the Elite Four, um, which 
you know, given some of the setbacks he's had this run, uh, fully get. I think that it's definitely reasonable to just sort of finish, get the get the first place, um, and not worry too too much about the time. Uh, the safer version of the Elite Four wastes around 30 seconds um, if everything goes correctly. Uh, but rather than having multiple chances to get crit and die, uh, you kind of have like maybe like one chance total for things to go wrong. Um, so it's a it's a heck of a lot safer, uh, but it does waste some time. Razor now getting ready for his archer fight. Hopefully it goes as smooth as T Pat's. And sheep making his way over to self code now. So the main gimmick on the Sabrina fight here is going to be uh, this Mr. Mime has light screen. And depending on if she decides to use light screen turn one, two, or three, um, can slightly impact how you do the fight. Generally, uh, she's going to use light screen on turn one. Uh, but if she does happen to use light screen not until turn three, you can actually skip setting up an X speed um, and KO the Pokemon rather than having to stall through the rest of light screen. So we're going to use two X specials and X speed then two shot the Mr. Mime. By the time we're done with the Mr. Mime, the light screen will be gone. Move on. That crit is fine. Interesting. Uh, instead, we're going to two shot the Alakazam. Or we're going to go for the pump and just Ooh. barely not get it. Kudos for hitting the pump, though, I will say. Yeah, I believe yeah, so. he was talking about that last night, about, you know, if it doesn't hurt, if you hit the pump and you hit the range, great. If you miss, you're just going to scald because the light screen wears off anyway. Yeah. Uh, and overall, it is the same number of turns if you do miss uh, as like the standard fight. So uh, the biggest thing is if you, because that Mr. Mime is going to be like spamming Psychic, there is the chance to get like a special defense drop. And if that happens, then that can be a bit unfortunate. Um, but luckily, luckily no special defense drops and was able to get through that fight. Looks like Razor and a decent archer as well. No, we're kind of focused on Sabrina. Mm -hmm. but... Yeah, I know he got um, self-destruct, no protect on turn one, so that was a good start. So T-Pat going to do a bit of menuing here, some, uh, swapping Hyper Potions up to the front. Going to deposit the rest of the party. Uh, we're about to go into Koga's Gym, so if we don't have 50 by now, uh, it's not like evolving stuff is going to help. Um, and then use these final two rare candies. Uh, normally you get up to only level 49, uh, but here we're going to go up to level 50. Just try to, to help a little bit with some of that damage. Swap some X items around. Um, and then make our way into one of the trolliest gyms in the run. Um, so every Pokemon in Koga's gym has both Toxic and Protect. Uh, and if you know Pokemon, you know that that can be very, very trolly. Um, also, the first trainer in the gym also has Minimize as well as Moonblast that can drop your special attack. So uh, it is possible to get through this in like eight turns. It's also possible to get through it in like 28 turns, uh, just depending on how unlucky you get. And Sheep is starting Archer as well. And 
No kicked by Koga for T-Path. Thunderbolt Screech. That is not Para and Para, that's not great. <laughs> Screech. Mm. Uh, Screech what? is bad because the Raticate has Sucker Punch. <laughs> that will do a lot more. It'll do double damage now because of the defense drops. Oof. I've gotten something similar to that before. Not with a Para, but with the defense drop, it's pretty bad. is definitely a rough position to be in. There's the boom, so that's good. Hopefully the muck goes down to the Q boom. Looks like Deepad had a good can. Oh. Oh, it minimized. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is such a rough position to be in. Another minimize. Oh no. Mm, I wonder if healing is mm. better there. It's kind of hard to say. I, I, I mean, probably would have taken out the wheezing. Cubone goes down. That can be a good thing. So yeah, your rival has four Pokemon. Uh, <laughs> Headstrong, another runner in our tournament, uh, found that out the hard way a little short time ago. Uh, hopefully we don't see that here. Hopefully we can just get it. It looks like the muck is down, so that's good. So a quick attack from the muck, that's really nice. Or from the Raichu, I should say. Okay, this this looks fine now. Yeah, the main problem uh, is the, the screech. Yeah, but the sucker punch. Yeah. It might be better to just die and revive, potentially, here. Like that's he does saying. have a max revive, so I think I think that's what I would probably do, is just go for it, hope the Sucker Punch goes into the Raichu. Like that. Get rid of the Golbat. Um, that's yeah, that's interesting. Sometimes he just goes for Sucker Punch there, which is good. And then Thunder Punch. Another Thunder Punch from this Raichu should work. Um, so yeah, I think this is... This is reasonable. Like T Pat got toxic turn one, and then uh, didn't see about the protects though. He's taking a little tiny bit of damage. At least two protects on Koga for T Pat. Yeah, the only thing um, for Sheep situation I'm a little bit concerned about is I don't know if that experience is necessary to hit 48 on Sabrina. Um, so depending on if he hits 48 on Sabrina or not, he might have to delay the candy to after Caden. It depends on if he got like a good, he got like a glowing catch in the mansion or something. Cause I know like glowing right. grimer helps quite a bit there. Don't recall. Obviously this is easy so be coughing, but I'm not sure. So t -Pat getting the strong push, uh, basically strength equivalent. Oh, we need strength for Victory Road, um, but obviously that's required to get to the Elite Four. Looks like Razor's doing the standard shop here, buying the special defenses. So we'll see... Uh... Uh, that's used generally with the X special defenses are used in one fight, although you may use it on another fight uh, in Elite Four. Or potentially two others, but definitely the one you would need it for. Yeah.
So T-Pat heading into uh, the Viridian City Gym coming up next, and uh, the first fight should be pretty uh, standard, but then you will know, we'll see what kind of approach he takes with the second fight. Uh, I'm assuming he's probably going to two controller, uh, given uh, he's planning to two controller Geo and uh, uh, the Elite Four. But um, yeah, I don't even know if I was going to say he could pump the Nido King, but uh, is that a range with his special attack, or is that still guaranteed? He's 50, so it should be fine. Yeah. Okay. Oh, right, there are candy. With max special attack, you can't psych it here, but not the Nido King, but. You can also do some interesting things with the 2C fight. If you have a certain special attack stat, you could go for um, Psychic into Stomp from Rapidash. And if the Nidoking King doesn't die, which is likely, then the Stomp just finishes it off. So here you're seeing the more standard version of the Sabrina fight from Razor. Um, so the light screen should wear off right after you get rid of the Mr. Mime, and then the rest of the fight, so all one shots. Oh, he is getting one controller. Ooh. Easy. What's funny is the, uh, you know, hype, Hydro Pump is 80% accurate, and then the move that you'll typically get in return is um, Mega Horn, which is 85% accurate. And very rarely does Mega Horn miss. I feel like I feel like Hydro Pump misses a ton. Yeah, I'm curious how that works. <laughs> yeah. Going over to pick up Lapras and the candy, and uh, T Pet's gonna do Geo. So this fight's interesting. You can—he's gonna two see it, which is definitely safe. And yeah, I think it's probably impossible to die here unless you mess up in putting in the battle. Uh, but with the one C fight, you would use an X defense to lead, and then set up an X special attack, and the Doug Trio's out speeding you. Um, if you have really good HP and defense, you can actually just go straight in and. Set up the X special attack, and uh, you can take you can tank two earthquakes with no uh, defense boosts. But this two C fight's nice and safe. The Doug Trio is still at speeds, and um, he's gonna use do the setup turn with Rapidash, and Rapidash is going to pay here uh, because even with the reduced damage from the spread earthquake, which I think is still a thing in this game, uh, it is. Yeah, you take Ooh, um, Rapidash yeah, toughed it out. Uh, oh, wait. Which is actually bad because uh, <laughs> it is slower now. <laughs> yeah, the the upside to this is uh, he'll be able to skip. Normally, you have to menu to revive the Rapidash because you want Rapidash to be alive for the next fight. Um, but it is just straight up slower um, to have it, you know, live like this. Uh, it should be about 10%. Um, Rapidash gains friendship because it's our ride Pokemon. Uh, any Pokemon that is out of the Pokeball will gain friendship as you walk around, so just a bit unfortunate. Um, well, obviously, super safe. And you can do all this menuing here. Um, sometimes runners will elect to um, also delay the elixir until this moment, just in case this happens. Um, kind of situational, it depends on how unlucky you got in Koga's gym, but it is possible. Toxic for Razor on Kaden. Oh no. To minimize. Okay, well, this is. Uh... Oh, and then he hydro pump. Oh, Alright, at least it was into protect. And then protect. Alright, hit the, hit the psychic. Hit, okay. Oof. 
I was getting some flashbacks there. I've had I've had a bad, pretty bad Caden before. And then Beedrill, the worst it could do here is just protect, but didn't get it, so. Not terrible, but not great. Razor, but we take that. All right, T-Pack going to make his way into the Viridian Rival fight. Um, so this is one of the fights that gains like the most benefit from a two-controller fight. Um, so you'll notice a lot of the two-controller fights we've done have been kind of short battles, um, battles that are one or two Pokemon long. Uh, and you kind of set up like an X special on the first one, and then you kind of waste a turn uh, with the second on the second Pokemon. Um, this fight, we're actually going to be setting up as we go through the battle. Uh, so all in all, we need to have plus... Uh, four special attack and plus two speed. Um, so we're actually going to go to plus two special attack on the first turn, plus two speed on the second turn, and then plus four special attack on the third turn. And we're basically just going to set up as you go through the entire fight. Um, it's really cool, and it's really only possible because of the way the trainer AI works. So uh, which Pokemon gets sent out next is uh, not random. It is based on what Pokemon you have out. And the game will basically look at the Pokemon that the trainer has in the back and say which Pokemon has the best effective move against you. So for Starmie's case, if it sees somebody that has a move like Thunderbolt, it's gonna be like, wow, Thunderbolt, that's super effective. That's 180 power. Um, and then it will look at all the other Pokemon to find which ones are you know, going to come out next. Um, on this particular fight, because we have two Pokemon out, the game is going to choose one of those two Pokemon to do that evaluation. And so we need something uh, that doesn't bait the Raichu out second. Uh, and so the Rapidash is actually weak to, I think the, the Cubone has Earthquake. Uh, so it's weak to Earthquake. So it sees that Earthquake is more powerful um, and will basically use that against uh, the Rapidash. Um, if it was just Starmie on the field, Vileplume would come out second, so it should be a 50-50 between Vileplume and Marowak. And we need the Raichu to not come out second, because we have to have the X speed set up before the Raichu shows up. Because in this generation, speed does not take effect on the turn you use the X speed, like it does in generations 8 and 9. Now T-Pat's going to make his way into Victory Road. Um, and Victory Road is where this category uh, differs from the any percent category. So uh, NMS mentioned earlier stands for no mount skips. Uh, basically, it was found fairly recently, like within the last couple years, um, that Aerodactyl and Rapidash specifically move fast enough that it's possible for them to go directly through a trainer's vision uh, without them being able to see you. Uh, they basically just don't have a chance to see you because you are fast enough to where on one frame you are before their vision and on the next frame you are after their vision. Um, and the reason it's split out into its own category is because in order to do that consistently, uh, currently you need to have a special Joy-Cons. Uh, you need Joy-Cons that are actually bad, um, that have this kind of like digital notching is what we call it where uh, it allows you to basically hold in one direction and it will move directly left or right instead of being like off by a slight angle. Um, and all four of the mandatory trainers here in Victory Road can be skipped um, by doing a bunch of these different setups with either Aerodactyl or Rapidash. Um, so we'll see everyone fighting these four trainers. Um, but that, that is the main difference between the two categories. Uh, it's only possible on Aerodactyl and Rapidash, which is a little unfortunate or fortunate, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, because by the time you get either Aerodactyl or Rapidash, uh, these are the only four trainers that are possible to skip. Because um, these are the only four trainers that are in your way in a place where you can actually use a ride Pokemon. Uh, every other trainer is like indoors or something like that.
since we have the 2C, can you help me here? Missed the range, but uh, nice and really safe here because... Uh... Well, they did get the defense drop, so yeah, Sucker Punch would have killed. So, good call to heal. And with the 2C, that makes that viable, because Rapidash can just heal and start. Yeah, it's Despite a very... his weird AI, it's sometimes very. It's not always going to go for Sucker Punch. You can pick kill. So. Yeah, we saw we saw Edgy yesterday go for the one controller fight, um, and it worked. So definitely can work. Uh, but you'll probably see most racers do two controller unless they really have to save like a little bit of time to catch up to their opponents. Sheep starting up Caden in, Co in Kobe's gym. Let's see how this goes. Looks like a standard start. Oh yeah, perfect, Caden. Sheep. Fortunate Gnosis hit on uh, T Pat. This hypno, if you have good special attack, you can go for a Hydro Pump and one shot it, but. Uh... I don't think uh, T-Pat's special attack is quite good enough for that. It's pretty unlikely. It's, it's really, really good stats for that. So usually you two-shot there. And then... um, do we know what's going on with Razor? Is oh, no. short of Pokemon? Oh, oh the Elixir. An elixir? Yeah, I would be short of Pokemon. He's already been to Koga's gym. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, grabbing the Elixir yeah. there, that's... Probably, I don't know where any other ones are, so that's really going to be like the best backup. There's one on the mansion, but that's even more of the way. Max Elixir. And there's one on like the bottom of Hideout, but that's going to be bad too. And then the Aether by Bill's house. Oh, I forgot also, about that one, yeah. Also out of the way. Although, maybe faster. Although, doing getting through all the getting through that. Area after Nugget Bridge with uh, with Rapidash would be uh, <laughs> mm. that'd be an adventure. Okay, so coming here, T-Pat's going to be doing Alexa Skip, which is not a mount skip because you are not on your mount. Perfect. Easy. see what Razor does for. Like Razor is going to 1C the Ditto King. Just like T-Pat did. A little unfortunate there for T-Pat missing the pump. Gets it second time try. Oh. Razor just went for the Psychic on the Ditto King and got it. Oh, okay. Wow. That's, um, that's like really only possible if you do the five candy route that like T-Pat's on right now. So I must, Razor must be on that as well. Um, because instead of being level 49, you'll be level 50.
Looks like Razer is going to one controller Geo as well. Right. I don't remember if he has the X Defense or not, but. Uh... I'm pretty sure he bought both the X Defense and the X Special Defense. Pat making his way final Pokemon Victory Road. Or final trainer, I should say. So one of the key things for Razor here, um, because you're taking damage in this version of the fight, you really want to be above like 27 or so HP. Um, because on the next fight, you can go directly in without healing as long as you can live a quick attack. Uh, so it looks like he might be just barely too low to go directly into the um, rival fight. It depends on what his uh, defense is going to be on this level up. But that is the ideal way for this to go. Uh, 107 seems like decent defense. He might be fine. I don't have the numbers off the top of my head. So T-Pat out of Victory Road around a 250. Um, generally, the uh, from end of Victory Road to the end, uh, using like normal strategies is going to be about 14 minutes. Um, that said, it doesn't have the like X special defense and stuff to do the more standard stuff. So he's probably going to lose a bit of time. Um, I'm going to say probably comfortably 305 pace right now, maybe 304 if, uh, you know, depending on how things go. But either way, this this should be you know, a pretty solid ending here for T-Pat. Sheep being the only one to opt for the two controller Samuel. But a much safer option. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, T Pat finishing the setup on Lorelei. Pretty low health. Um, but should be safe for the rest of this fight. Uh, interestingly enough, I don't know if any of the notes have what Dugong's Aqua Jet range is. Uh, I'd be a little worried personally, but it looks like it was fine. Jet. I didn't know that. <laughs> I yeah. didn't know that either. <laughs> yeah, it's about half what Waterfall does. Yeah, so I think he would have been fine. But there's a new thing for everyone to be worried about. You're welcome. And be right back doing calcs. Um, <laughs> generally, the strategy has, is. It also has Ice Shard, too. What a weird moveset. <laughs> um, yeah, I was going to say, generally, you go into that fight at full health, so, like, Aqua Jet never really is a thing. Um, but depending on your situation, you might 
like T-Pat did, just be able to go directly in and said heal before Bruno. Um, in normal strategies, you will always take damage on Bruno, uh, but because T-Pat still has Rapidash in his party, um, the Onyx is going to have a chance of using Stealth Rock instead because the game says, oh, you have more than one Pokemon in your party. Let me go ahead and set up an entry hazard for you. Um, but obviously you're not switching, so it doesn't really impact you at all if that happens. Um, and that's what we got here. So uh, beautifully done. Only one menu uh, before Agatha. Um, very nice. He is getting turnarounds here. Yeah, yeah this is... Route. That's the side effect of the higher candies, is you'll get turnarounds here. also electing to go for 2C Geo. So he'll have to revive his Rapid Ash. But doesn't have to worry about healing his army at all. HP is very high. Alright. So T Pat going on to Agatha. Um you will see runners, depending on if they're doing safe strats versus like semi safe versus normal strats, uh, you'll see a couple of different approaches here. Um, T Bot's going to be doing a standard fight uh, just with a little bit of safety in that he's got the Rapidash in the back to always have an opportunity to call the second controller if things go wrong. Um, but generally, the way this fight will go is you use an X special attack, you get hit with glare, you use an X speed. It hits you with crunch and does about half health. You then full restore to heal both your health and the paralysis. Um, and then then you can do your you know, sweeping. Um, the danger comes in if the Arbok uses crunch turn one, which is possible but unlikely. Um, there's also a chance of poison jab, which is always a weird thing when it happens. Um, and yeah, crunch I got the... Uh... Perfectly See standard. the defense drop. Defense drop from Crunch as well. Yeah. Because the Golbat has quick attack. You gotta be careful with that if uh, you get the defense drop. If you get, like, power, if you get power of love, turn one, it uses glare, you get power of love, you kill our block right away. Because it'll, I assume it would go for glare again. And that's kind of slow. So you, you would set up on the Golbat. The problem is there, the Golbat is. It has Thunderbolt, which you'd have to X Special Defense. It's a nice thing to have. But t -Bat doesn't have X Special Defenses. So I assume in that particular scenario, you would just set up, continue to set up on the air block. Without the X Special Defense. Looks like T-Pat will be cruising through Agatha, no problem here, and uh, on to Lance. Uh, Lance is the first of the two fights where we might see two controllers. Um, you can t you can two controller Agatha as well uh, in certain situations, but uh, it's much more common to see it on Lance and on Champ. Yeah, so <clears throat> the standard way through this fight is going to be to use an X special defense, and then you have to set up to plus two speed and plus six special attack. Um, all the while, you're taking damage from the Seedra, and if it decides to critical hit you with a Hyper Beam, uh, that is really bad. So uh, the safer way through this fight is a little bit awkward. Uh, T-Pat is going to be doing the two controller fight, but he's not summoning the second controller yet. Um, instead, he's going to set up the first X item, 
um, and then we're going to see what happens here. So Cedra used Hyper Beam, which means it has to recharge this turn, so T-Pad's going to take an extra uh, chance to do an X item like that. Um, and then T-Pad's actually going to summon the second controller mid-battle, and then use the second controller for the rest of the fight. Um, the reason why this is useful is because um, all these two controller fights, or two controller turns, take longer than a one controller turn. Um, and unfortunately, like some of the other fights we've been talking about, uh, you really need the X speed to be set up before the Aerodactyl comes out, otherwise you don't outspeed it. But you also need plus two special attack in order to KO the Seedra. So, you basically set up one of your X items as a one controller turn, then summon the second controller to do the rest of your setup. Um, it's a bit weird, uh, but it ends up ends up being faster than just sort of starting the fight with two controllers and then hoping for the best. Um, I'm assuming you also don't, also don't want Rapidash out there on turn one because uh, Cedric could Hydro Pump it. Exactly, yeah. Um, I was going to say, T-Pat's star is not very good, um, and so this here is going to be a range on the Dragonite. Uh, we'll see exactly how good it is. 134 is not very good. Uh, I don't have the numbers in front of me. It's probably something like a 12 and 16, maybe 11. Um, but another benefit of the two controller fight is you're both at full health uh, and have a second Pokemon to do a little bit of chip damage if you need. So uh, luckily, T-Pat just hit the range, didn't have to worry about it. But that is a situation uh, to be in for sure. And Rapidash might just outspeed Dragonite anyway, so you may not even take damage from it. So Stomp just finishes it off. In most cases. Or some cases. I'm not sure if it's possible for it to survive both a Psychic and a Stomp, but possible. Mm -hmm. All right, so... And t -Pad also um, doing 2C champ as well. Yep. Uh, this fight, very similar to the previous one in terms of the standard setup. Uh, the main difference is uh, you only have to go to plus 4 special attack in Eevee. Uh, in Pika, you do sometimes have to go to plus 6. Um, but there's a side strategy you can do where you use your last X special on the Vile Plume. Um, but the... Uh, Main difference is the Pidgeot. Pidgeot is going to be spamming the same move always instead of like one of three moves like the Cedra, and it hits very hard. It does almost a third of your health. Um, so even though it is less total setup than the previous fight, uh, you generally will have to heal uh, way more than you have to on Lance. So uh, we're going to do a similar two controller fight to kind of like what we did on Giovanni. Um, Best case scenario is this right here. Uh, we actually want the Rapidash to go down to a quick attack on this turn. Uh, this health is kind of high, so... Oh! Oh, it toughed it out! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> um, that is so unfortunate. Uh, just because now you're going to have to deal with that second controller for the rest of the fight. Um, oh, and think some other things have quick attacks? Uh, there is Raichu. another quick attack. I think Raichu. Yeah. Raichu does have quick attacks, so... Or, or Rapidash. It's Rapidash, maybe. I think maybe both. Jolteon does in, uh, in Pika version. Pretty sure. Hopefully this Raichu goes for that quick attack. Alright, perfect. Um, even though only one Pokemon's alive, you still will get this sort of like double battle lag um, in between turns, which is a bit unfortunate. Uh, but you obviously don't have to actually select moves every time, so it is a bit faster in that regard. And the time we're looking for uh, is with two Pokemon in the Hall of Fame. Um, the Hall of Fame sequence takes about a minute and one minute and two seconds. 
Uh, so, looks like this should be comfortable 304 for T-Pat. Uh, looking at probably like a 304... 38, 304, 40, depending on when the timer actually started. So, GG's for T-Pat. Great run. Especially with the start he had. Um, definitely awesome to see a 304 come out of that. We got Razor taking on Lorelei. Um, something we didn't mention when T-Pack got there, uh, there is the potential to do either a plus four or a plus six version of this fight. Uh, just depends on your special attack. Looks like Razor's only going to plus four, uh, which is faster, but you do have to hit a Hydro Pump. Uh, you normally have to hit a Hydro Pump. Sometimes you have a good enough Scald. And that looks like a 304, 37, 304, 38 for T-Pad. Ooh, she just uh, hit Alexa, unfortunately. Oh, no. Not the end of the world, but just some time lost. Yeah, that happens. Yeah, so with really bad, um, with a really bad stats on Starmie, you can, uh, the Wigglytuff, I think, is a range. <laughs> so. Yep. And the Dragonair can be one, too. Oh, wow. I, I know both the couple that happened to me once, but I didn't know the dragon. Yeah, okay, we should have T-Pat joining us shortly. Yeah, yeah, I'm here. Hello, T-Pat. Congratulations hey, on the TV. time. Yeah, Dude. thank you, thank you. Oh, boy. I, <laughs> I was so nervous, especially in, like, the first hour of that run. Uh, and now that it's finished, I am still nervous because this is very close to what I think might be a pot one cutoff time. Um, but still had a nice mid game, so. I guess I'll be happy enough. I won't be salty like Echi was of the 259. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it seemed like, uh,. It seemed like the run was a very roller coastery kind of run. Like your start was obviously had a lot of catches, but then you were like pretty far behind. Um, and then, you know, coming out of tunnel uh, made note of your pace and it was actually pretty good. Um, and then even stuff like, you know, late game like Archer went really well for you, um, committing to the sort of safer Elite Four straps. So it seemed like a run was kind of all over the place, but it's awesome time to finish with. Yeah, uh, that's that's honestly the perfect assessment. My my early game was butt awful. Um, I'm not gonna shut the trigger, but like that was a terrible, terrible start. Like through Brock, I think I had a. If I'm looking back on my splits here, I had a basically a 21 Brock, and that was only with eight hooks. So it was terrible uh, early game, and that didn't help my nerves at all. So I was just playing so nervous, like my hands were very clammy cold, which is like the worst. So I have like no grip and no feeling in my hands. And it just took me so long to calm down. Um, but the Route 10 the route ten and Rocket Tunnel section went very well, save for missing Graveler, but no big deal there. Uh, I also made note of my pace and it was like 303 pace. Mm -hmm. After the completely atrocious start, to basically come out of hideout and say, oh, I'm on 303 pace, okay. So that helped me mentally. I finally got a little bit calmed down from there. Uh, I had your favorite version of the Archer fight, as you mentioned. Yep. Um, and the, really the only thing else that was bad that happened was I kept getting encounters. I had six encounters this run to tack yep. on to the nine that I had yesterday. And I think you saw that most of them were just spawning on top of me. And it gets really frustrating when they spawn like on you or like one step in front of you. And I just outright didn't have time to react to a lot of those encounters. I can only think of like maybe two that I could have dodged, but it is it is frustrating getting that many encounters when you should be like getting one or less. So yeah, again, like, it was costing me a lot of time. And then the other roller coaster part that I know you guys are gonna mention, Rapidash living not once but <laughs> twice this run uh, probably costed me a 303 because that was a lot of time yep. that I lost on Giovanni and on Champ to uh, Rapidash not going down. Yeah, that was uh, 
definitely unfortunate. It's like 20 seconds each time. So yeah, this probably would have been either like the lowest 304 or probably a, a high 303 without that. Um, going back to the encounters, I was going to say, I felt so bad. After the day you had yesterday, I felt so bad that literally Route 1, route you one. run into something. <laughs> not, and it was like, not even oh to no. Oats parcel. Yeah. Um, but um, I mean, you, you held it together, so. That made me so nervous because, like, I was I was screen watching a lot early game, and it's like Razor was just outright beating me. It like wasn't even close. He was ahead by more than a minute, and I actually had to like put the stream down, and I was like, I need to just not watch this for a little bit because I needed to focus a lot on my own run um, to to recover it. But yeah, my early game yeah. was so slow that I I had set my time for 11:33. I wasn't even in the basement room to get double moonstone. I gave right. myself the extra minute, and I was still not fast enough. Yeah, I think I think you and Razor were tied basically through, or so Razor was ahead, and then you two were tied, like leaving Mount Moon and through the Cerulean section, um, and then progress-wise, the two of you were tied at Rival Three, but you had the one extra poke, so it was like from that point you kind of held a, a decent lead, um, and then by the end of the catch section. Um, I think the, the lead kind of opened up, and it's been pretty consistent since. Uh, I don't know if you saw any of the run. Razor actually forgot to grab the T from Brock, um, which was Whoa. a bit of a detour, as well as didn't and pick elixir. up the Elixir on Route 17. So uh, on the way from Fuchsia to Viridian, had to make a pit stop on Route 17 to grab the extra Elixir. Um, so that's what so That's why it's yeah, not as close as it was. I didn't see it, but, but I... Yeah. I just knew that I was just pulling away more and more through the second half of the run. Ugh. I'm, I'm on my way to check my star, by the way. Okay. It was rough. It was bad. I, it was not I, good. I, I, I know for a fact it's zero <laughs> not so IV, good. but I got a ton of AVs in special attack, so I had a little bit, but I did leverage catching the Rapidash. Uh, as a free extra candy, and I yep. think that that may have helped in a couple situations, um, but not enough to be super noticeable, especially like with getting turnarounds on every Bruno Pokemon. So there's another 10 seconds of that. Um, but yeah, it's just like, what can you do? And the star was technically above average on CP. I think my special defense is like off the charts. Yeah, the... The, the hyper beam did like less than half. I was just so, so surprised. Yeah, the um, all three of you. I think Razor had like it was like ten fifty two. You had a ten sixty eight, and Sheep had a ten seven. Like you were all in like this one twenty point uh, difference. Uh, Razor's Razor ro uh, rolled a very good star. Um, Sheep's is kind of similar to yours. I think it's got better special, but about the same speed. So I don't know if you want to throw my screen back on. But uh, the stats are interesting, to say the <laughs> least. Not so good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> HP and attack, fantastic. <laughs> so, just, just wanted to show that off. That I, de I definitely knew that the special attack was, was a zero. Uh, speed was not zero, but it was probably single item. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, looks like Razor... Um, getting through Lance here. Um, I didn't see... I'm assuming Razor doesn't have any uh, range on the Dragonite, just with the special attack that they had. Um, I see as well. But, I mean, also exiting Lance at full health is really nice. Um, with the one controller version of the fight, you can ex exit at full health if on your final setup turn the um, Cedra goes for Hyper Beam. And so on the recharge turn, you can heal. Um, which just saves a bit of a menu. So, yeah, 144 special. Definitely no range here on the Dragonite. So just champion left for Razor as Sheep finishes up Lorelei.
Razor are going for 2C, champ. I respect it. It's um almost like there's basically uh one way that this can go wrong, and it's heavily dependent on how your star is and everything. Like you literally need a max roll crit with a bad star. <laughs> or a high roll crit, I should say, not max. Um yeah, otherwise this is a pretty safe fight. Uh, looks like Sheep got the Stealth Rock from the Onyx, which is awesome. Uh, doesn't have to worry about Faint. Uh, we didn't mention it because no one was really in the situation this uh, race, but the Hitmonlee at the end of Bruno does have Faint, which is a high priority move. Um, doesn't usually go for it, even if it will kill you. Uh, there are a couple of runners who uh, get uh, more unlucky than others, so uh, yeah, but it's, it's good to not see it. I had that nice situation where um... I was high enough to not heal before Lorelei, so I took the heal before Bruno, and since you have two Pokemon, you can favor Stealth Rock, uh, which means I didn't even have to heal heading into Agatha, so healing yep. before, I had to do the extra um, Victory Road heal, and it ended up evening out because I didn't have to do the Agatha heal. Yep, and uh, Razor's through the setup um, with Rapid Ash Fainting, which is... As we know from the previous run, not a guarantee. Um, I had three Power of Loves, and two of them were on Rapid Ash. Nice. Now Razor's basically uh, just mashing A. Um, should be good on Champion. So Sheep's about to go into Agatha. Agatha, um, be interesting to see what version of Agatha he's going to do. Uh, going into his box, it looks like he's going to grab the Dodrio. Um, I'm assuming grab the star. Okay. <laughs> I was a little bit worried about that. Um, but yeah, so the uh, the reason why we're withdrawing Dodrio here is, um, like we mentioned on Rival 5, uh, the order of the Pokemon that comes out matters. Uh, and if you just sort of have like any old Pokemon, you're likely going to have a chance of having Gengar come out second. And you want the X speed before Gengar. Uh, so you want a Pokemon that is weak to electric moves, uh, which the Weezing has Thunderbolt, but not weak to poison moves, which the Gold or the Gengar has Sludge Bomb. Um, and so by having a Pokemon like uh, Dodrio here, uh, you're going to bait out the... Uh, bait out the Weezing second. Um, although it looks like he's going to approach it as a one controller fight and maybe use the two controller as just a backup, which is a fair way to do it for sure. That's how I approach it. Um, just with Agatha really only having like one chance to crit and as long as your defense isn't really low, uh, it's not too risky and you can just bail out if you have the defense drop or something other funky, something else funky happens. The crit should still be out of quick attack range uh, from the Golbat, so we should be good. And it looks like Razor is just about done. Time. All right. That was um, not a good. <laughs> Hello, Razor. Congrats Hello, on the finish. GG. So, so tell us about your the run. Star you... was, your, yeah, your start was a little better than mine, though. <laughs> My start was good. Like, I got the two shot on Pika. Um, I got a... I had a really good start. Up until... Well, Moon wasn't great. Uh, I had double Moon Onyx, which was weird. <laughs> no, I hit two optionals, which was just terrible. And then... a couple in this place. Like I, I noticed I overpot headbutt like an idiot. <laughs> okay, that that explains it. I was like, no! <laughs> it was so Yeah, we, we also noticed the um, missing the T on the way into Saffron. Yeah, um, well, I mean, it's 
I didn't expect that to just skip. I'm like, wait, what? I just skipped it? Okay. Yeah, um, and, then the and then I miss I, I elixir. I got the pony right before you get the elixir and just mm -hmm. went straight down instead of getting the elixir. I'm like, oh crap. Uh so I backtracked and grabbed it real quick. Yeah, there's so this much happening in play. that section of the run between like party managing and catching and picking up those items that I've missed that elixir before as well. Just mm -hmm. because you like saw something that you needed to catch right by it and your brain just gets turned around turned around i can i can see that for sure yep yep you did die the once so i had to reheal like it died on i think it died to uh was, rival four. yeah i was gonna say it was rival four because we didn't see exactly what happened uh, but we saw the eevee die I got crit turn one, and then I got thunder punch into para. Oh. Uh, um, and I instead of healing the Eevee, I just went for the heal with para, and I should have healed the Eevee. That would have been fun. What I should have done is heal the Eevee and then hit, um, hit the Raichu with Nito. It worked. Right. Um, so, <clears throat> Sheep finishing up Lance here. Um, not sure how he's already level 54. I don't know what candy route this is. Oh, wait, he hit Alexa. That would explain something. Oh. I did also see him pick up Mansion candy. Okay. Yeah, so he's probably 5 candy plus the Alexa experience. That would make sense. Yeah, I, I grabbed the Mansion Candy, which I'm doing during the races just because I don't know what kind of Starmie I'm going to have. Yeah, that's fair. I ended up 3 plus 2 in it uh, because of how bad my star was. Um, but it was almost just by by default because I ended up catching Rapidash instead of Ponyta because I was getting to Ooh. the bottom of the route. And I'm like, Rapidash is on the screen, so I'm going to go for it. So I did save a candy and I was just like, yeah, with that combo, I'll take 3 plus 2. Yeah. I went 3 plus 2 even with the pony, but my star was crazy fast and pretty solid special attack. I barely missed the range on the Jinx that was scald. Mm -hmm. Although I got really lucky I hit the Psychic on Samuel. <laughs> I had no business yeah. hitting that. <laughs> I was gonna say, like... That's, I mean, obviously I, you were level 50, which enables it, but like, that's really mm -hmm. high range to have to hit. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a one or, two, that was like a one or two out of 16. Oh, man. <laughs> T-Bag got the After nice, I uh... hit on my way. That, did that just happen? Because I meant to hit Hydro and I ended up going, arrowing down twice. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was an accident. <laughs> oh, it, it was worked. an accident. Okay. It works. Um. Yeah, no, I was going to say T-Pack got the nice uh, crit on Jesse and James, too. Yeah, that to was... To two-shot, or to two-turn in the fight. I was That's shook. Always nice. I was just like, how did that kill? <laughs> I didn't even think a crit would kill, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the, the funny thing is, is you were still level 27, and I wasn't fully paying attention to AVs, but I don't think you had many special attack AVs. No, and I so, had one. I had mm -hmm. one out of um, um, That sure wheezing... That wheezing at plus four honestly was probably a range as well. Um, you hit it, which was awesome. But yeah. because you were not level 28 yet, I think that was a range. So yeah, good on you for getting yeah, that. Most most of my 80s went to attack. I was the uh, light to crash about characteristic. Uh, I rolled four out of the ten in attack. So I, I had high attack, which was nice. Um, but it didn't help on the the metapod because I actually missed the metapod range at level 10 and I was so confused mm. and then when I saw like a ton of attack uh, I was like even more confused I actually also missed the coffee range JJ1 14 to 16 with my attack Dang. so I was getting a little bit unlucky with like a lot of things happening especially mm -hmm. with the like, ranges the encounters the force being bad all that was just, was really making me struggle 
right, so Sheep threw all the setup here on Champion, so it should be a very comfortable PB. I think Sheep's PB uh, said was like a 332, so this is yeah, gonna be a really nice fat PB. 325 most likely. Um, definitely very good. Yeah, it's a nice PB. We take those. Absolutely. What was your nature on your EV, Tifa? I had gentle, so I was minus defense plus special defense. Mm. And I ended up with the naughty. Yeah, <laughs> I saw the, the stats on the level. I was like, oh, that's naughty, okay. <laughs> yup. And then sheep was thinking. I wasn't one. even going to, like, when I thought about it this morning, I'm like, I have a backup, but I'm not even going to go to the backup because if I do, I'm still losing like 10 minutes. Oh, actually, that's a good point. She technically did load the backup, so uh, this is not a... This is absolutely a race PB, uh, but this would not be a technical, like, leaderboard submittable PB, unfortunately. Mm. Um, but definitely shows that he's capable of it. Uh, oh, yeah. Which is awesome. Yeah, I'm at a point now where like I'm not gonna risk losing that time for like that time right there, so I'm just gonna go. Mm -hmm. I'm taking my backup if I'm minus attack. Um, natured, uh, the couple minus attacks I've run in practice have been really bad. I've tend I've tend to lose lose about like seven turns uh, throughout mm -hmm. the course of the run, and some of it is really dangerous, like. You can get poisoned on the sand slat or the sand tree. You can get poisoned on the coffee, things like that. Right. All right. So it's like sheep's gonna be finishing up here. Uh, I know the time from the spoiler from the race time. Right. Hmm. All right. So yeah, three twenty-five, forty-four. The race time says forty-six. Um. GD. Yeah, GG's sheep. GG. Nice PB. Ah, thank you all. Yeah, that was a really good run. Some mistakes here and there, but I'm very happy with this. Very nice. Well said. Was definitely uh, like a goal time for me to get like a 120, uh, a 325. So, right. Getting awesome. that in the first round nice. is like perfect. Heck yeah. Yeah, and it it looked like your um, you had a nice catch. Uh, catch route because you had like it was like 28 or something entering rock tunnel like it was an absurd amount Jeez. early game yeah it was um i i had like some bad luck with like just missing like out auto aiming just out out of the so i was a bit low on exp but my catches wow. were pretty good uh, mostly in the early game like uh through mount moon i was actually pretty low so then i actually had to catch something extras and that worked out pretty fine Gotcha, gotcha. I had a, I had an awful archer too. Oh my god, yeah. If, oh, the, if yeah. the other racers didn't see Sheep's archer too, uh, please go back and watch it. It was disgusting. <laughs> it it, it wasn't on my like, screen for a little bit, right? Yeah, yeah. Raichu clutched it out. Really, Raichu was the MVP. Was like yeah, a, a thunderbolt paralyzed turn oh. one, paralyzed fully. Um, Ouch. Then two, uh, two, two, uh, two minimizers on the muck. Yeah, that's so bad. I did. I will say I learned something new. Raichu's Thunder Punch does over half to eradicate. <laughs> so there you go. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone ever needs to know that? Um. Yeah. That that's asking him to actually attack the Kate though. Yeah. Uh. She. Uh. I think. In. Uh. Smartly. Um opted to risk getting hit with a sucker punch um to basically go for the KO on the goal bat and luckily the sucker punch went into the radicate or the uh, Raichu instead. Mm -hmm. uh, which was a really nice turn. Yeah, um, I had a I picked up the max revive. So I was like, if needed, I can just max revive and Yeah. Um, smart play. Like start because... again, get rid of the paralyze or like the full load HP at that point. Yeah, That's because also, also for context, uh in addition to getting minimized uh sheep also got screeched by the muck so the oh, defense yeah. was lower so wouldn't have even lived like sucker punches no um, even if he did heal so that's so yeah, bad it was, it was a time <laughs> i i was i was happy i got what i got yeah that what i, I didn't really follow nice. the race at all 
I didn't follow the race at all. So what were the other times? Uh, three seventeen fifteen, and then TPAC got a three hundred four thirty eight. Okay, good races. Yeah, absolutely. Do no, no. I'll 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 take suggestions here. Do I have to apologize to chat? Or am I good for ignoring two chances? Absolutely not. <laughs> you do not have to say anything to chat. All right. <laughs> yeah, no. Chat, you, you don't you have to worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if, if you guys didn't see, I got a, uh, I got a chancy spawn on Route 10, uh, but I was with a full party of unevolved Pokemon. A lot of them just needed one more level. And the more I thought of, I like, ch I did check my party situation and I was like, mm, no. Uh, and mm -hmm. I was much happier with just eradicate spawning uh, instead of taking the chancy there. Uh, the other one, I definitely don't have to apologize for a route 16 chancy spawn behind yeah. the cut bush. Yeah, no. That's yeah. even worse <laughs> than 17. Like, yeah, right. It is even worse than 17. <laughs> Um, but I think I got my memes out of the way by catching a Rapidash. Uh, did not catch a Ponyta at all. Uh, I saw one spawn right at the end, but I was already set on catches because a Psyduck yeah. spawned, and I was like, oh, okay, I don't need Ponyta at all anymore. Thankfully, Psyduck spawned first for me, but I, my catch route wasn't all that hot. I needed, a, I needed everything late, with the exception of evolving coughing. 